And welcome to the computer game show. I am Deep Sean, and I'm joined by Matthew Murray. Hello, and James Farley. Hello. How's it going, boys? Yeah, it's going excellent. Yeah. You're right. I mean, good, we've good, gone straight good. in there with the Deep Sean mention. Yeah, what, yeah, what is that? Because I haven't be watched your to. thing yet, and I, probably, <laughs> I should have done. Did you, um, not, did you not see I mean, the video I put out as well, James? No. no. Yeah, yeah like he like actually a, clipped it for you, yeah, James. Like it only a mini video on minutes. Twitter. Really? <laughs> I'll, have a look. I'll have a look later. But yeah. I mean, it came up in the feedback, so should we just should we just get straight into that? Yeah, I mean, uh, let's see. Well, I, I don't know where I put it in the feedback, but we'll we'll scroll down the feedback. Um, well, you know what? We'll, we'll come to that in the feedback. Give us yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll start off with Andrew Enterhampton. James, um, this is regarding James's uh, hidden talents as a trumpet. It's not talent. Be gone. <laughs> trumpet is that the name? Is that the... <laughs> Trumpeteer? I don't Trump, know. Trump, well, trumpeter? Trumpetist? Like you know the lingo there, James. But anyway, yeah. Andrew Southampton emailed in, James, I used to play brass. Yep, yeah, for, for a couple of uh, years, around 10 years old. Oh, God. And F- so euphonium. 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 Yeah, he, knows, he knows the words. And euphonium, which is a small <laughs> tuba, basically. I think euphonium. I got to grade yeah. two and then stopped. It weighed a lot, and hauling it to school when its giant case started to get old. My parents wanted me to play, and I was enthusiastic about it at first, but now it sits in a cupboard and moves house with me and has become a symbol of guilt <laughs> of not living up to my parents' expectations. <laughs> if your story is at all similar... Please don't let others provoke you with your with the trumpet with the mouth trumpet noises. Brass <laughs> solidarity, my brother, and that's from Andrew Southampton. <laughs> See, that's amazing that he's like kept it and like still keeps. I mean, I I just stashed it away somewhere so that I'd never have to look at it again. It's um, <laughs> yeah. You see, I because that was the thing that always put me off learning an instrument properly when I was young is that like you'd see the few kids that were doing that lugging them around yeah, and then yeah. having to go and do it on on like during lunchtime or whatever, and you're just like nah. Nah, it's that. it's not That's, fun. It, it was never yeah. fun doing that, and also then you have to go to all the concerts and stuff as well, which are always like interminably yeah. bad, you know, because yeah. people yeah. can't really play that well. And I remember once I went to we had one at my school, and it was really embarrassing because there was this some guy who was like playing the violin, and it was really bad because you know like, with the violin you have to be good for it to actually sound yeah, yeah, like yeah. fine. And so we were sitting there, and this kid was playing the violin. He was only about I don't know. 12 or something and I looked in the audience my dad was sitting there and he was just rocking with laughter like he was just trying he was <laughs> trying know. to stop himself he was trying to stop himself laughing and it was just <laughs> it was embarrassing because he was just like biting his hands and all sorts well, of things the thing, because when someone plays an instrument badly it's not you're not even laughing out of malice no, are it's you just it's, the it's just funny yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, so, I mean, I, I remember once we were there, and like the PA system picked up like taxis as well, and I just couldn't stop laughing either because that was that was amazing. It's like, all right, turning right down George Street and stuff like that, and it was just you know, it sounded funny. The um, when I was in college, I uh, studied music tech, and one of the things we I don't think it was even part of the course. I think our, our tutor just asked us to help out, but there was a, a college production of Jesus Christ Superstar, um, and we did the the audio for it, and. Um, so basically throughout the show, we were sort of sat behind a mixing desk, sort of, you know, checking whose mics are coming in when and stuff like that. Um, and one of the guys who was doing the lights, who was like, he's one of the, you know, he's, like he's what, sometimes you get them at college where like he's a caretaker, but also he's like incredibly fucking technical. Like he's obviously done something more interesting in a past life. Um, so he was doing all the lights and stuff. And he actually came over to the mixing desk and told me that I would have to cover my arms uh, during the show because they were so pale um, <laughs> that it was like distracting oh. for the audience. <laughs> <laughs> wear long sleeves please yeah so that was uh, that was good um, what else we got that? <laughs> you're blinding me <laughs> oh no um, oodles at oodles odim on twitter I'm starting to graph the dynamic between the three hosts and it works Sean is a conductor keeping on the musical theme Matt is percussion mm. and James is on the triangle he does want to be there but he has no choice <laughs> also I keep telling people at work thanks for letting me be natural and it kind of works Oh, don't do that. They'll think you're weird. Yeah, no, <laughs> they will think you're weird. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'll dare say that at work without without some worry about some HR repercussion. <laughs> uh, are you happy being on Triangle, James? Oh, I guess so. <clears throat> I mean, it's all right, isn't it? It's better than trumpet. Yeah, that's true. So, is it, Hans, so just back on the trumpet thing, you're telling me you I'm haven't got it out of the loft in the last week. You haven't even been tempted. 
Of course not. Why would I do that? Well, I just thought, you know, we might have, we might have um, you know, stirred up some old memories, some old feelings. You're like, you no, know, because I've, I've, get... I've also got kids in the house, and I don't want my son like getting hold of that, and like, you know, like spending that time just keep <laughs> that, using it. Does you know that his dad used to be a trumpist? Of course not. And I was not. I just did it for a couple of years. <laughs> well, since you went <laughs> to shows it. and all sorts. So, yeah. why, why haven't you just sold it? I think that's what gets me. Well, it's a bit battered, isn't it? Because I did used to smash okay. it around a bit. Because <laughs> okay. especially when, I, when I got fed what, up with just it. just vigorous performances well, yeah, or because you were what, actually raging you're at it. you punk trumpist? No, I used to get fed up with it and just like hit it into walls and stuff. Hit <laughs> <laughs> it into walls and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Be like, oh, it's all dense. It's broken now. It's got loads of dents in it because uh, from anger of having <laughs> oh to do God. it. Your it's parents so... spent loads of money on a decent trumpet and you're like, bang. It's like, it's not a guitar, James. No, I wish it was, <laughs> Mum. <laughs> 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 Sounds shit now. <laughs> Can't do the shows now. Oh, I just played it normally and now it's broke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need a better one with strings and a fretboard. Um, <laughs> at, uh, Alex Semi on UK. Uh, keeping on the medieval themed um, stuff, and this has been like three or four weeks running, mm-hmm. but we'll keep it going. So I'm enjoying this. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 every time I read these, I'm like, oh, I'm quite hungry now. Anyway, Alex at Alex Hempton on UK went to a medieval theme place in Tenerife about 20 years ago, full on jousting show. Oh. And when you wanted another drink, you had to stand on the table and shout more wine. Also, unlimited chicken and uh, anacrylist, anacron- anacronistically. Oh, fucking hell. Yeah, that, that word, <laughs> chips. <laughs> It's, it's, also, it's, it's also medieval, Matt. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, anyway, <laughs> unlimited chicken and chips. Um, See, that sounds great, but what's the... What kind of quality What's the, like? the teetotal option? Do I have to stand on the ch- on the table and shout, More Ribena! <laughs> more <laughs> what? Wait, what's the <laughs> More fruit juice! Are we, we going to mention the thing that we looked up the other day? Or not? Oh, we... shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, we need to do that, don't you we? Remember what was it? I forget the details. Well, because yeah. we were thinking about Res and about a meetup, and then we thought about <laughs> medieval times, and then I looked it up, and then we found a place that was very similar to it that's quite yeah. close by, and we yeah. thought that might be quite good as a venue um, for, the, for, for the meet. Yeah, for yeah. the meet. Everyone has to dress up, of course. Um, yeah, yeah you've got to be in full costume. And, and if James no, you wants to drink, them. everyone runs and say, Oh, please, sire, what can I get, Sir James? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, so we'll be like three kings sat at a table. <laughs> See, I had a look at the and reviews. Really weird and embarrassing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> On the reviews, they talked about, like, because it said, like, can you hire costumes? And they said okay. yes. And then quite right, a lot right. of people said, how big do they get the costumes? You know, they can you get, like, really <laughs> massive ones. And they were like, yes, yeah. yes, we've got you covered. So, yeah. <laughs> I know their audience. Yeah, so there's me <laughs> up at, mid- at medieval times in London, uh, or, or not. Yeah. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Um, last week, we talked about, well, uh, James, uh, I, I don't know, Sean talked about it, but James um, mentioned the. Uh, Epic, oh no, okay, right. Well, what's, what's the name of the explic- uh, oh, Was it the Indie Gamer Chick? Indie Gamer yeah. Chick it was. Collection. It's the Indie Gamer Chick, chick Collection. collection. Yeah. Indie, yeah. Indie Gamer yeah. Chick Collection, as James mentioned it. We mentioned a game called Hidden in Plain Sight, uh, 360 <laughs> Classic. Uh, SMW uh, on Twitter, just to let you know, Hidden in Plain Sight got re released recently for Xbox One. It's on the new Xplig store. It's about the only game on there worth playing, except for Tennis Story. Uh, Louis Proctor also <laughs> tweeted in at Louis P on Twitter. For your information, you can download old Xplig games on a 360, but you just can't buy them anymore. Only games you'd already bought. Applejack one and two is also on Steam, okay. so I did not know that. That's good. That's yeah. good knowledge. Uh, we had a few tweets asking James to play certain songs that people have sent in YouTube YouTube clips for. Can you do a cover of this <laughs> and the other? So, I mean, I still think we can try and get James to do some trumpet think, stuff on. No, no, James, obviously, James. the answer to that is going to be no. But think, you know, James. All all joking aside, can you do Mute City from F Zero? <laughs> 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 that would be amazing. Do you know, it's would. almost worth going up in the loft, seeing if I can find it, and then practicing Just get that. Out, like, like get time. it out and take a picture of it, at least. <laughs> yeah, I'll have a look and see if I can find okay, it. Well, next week, James go to a full-on concert. At the end of the show, wait for it. It's going to be 45 minutes of <clears throat> original material. I don't, know, I don't know if I could do the lips anymore. It's, like, sorry, it's been so long <laughs> since I last did it. Yeah. Uh, um, AGDQ this year, there's, there was a guy... Oh, what game did he speed run? I can't remember. It was, it was good. Um, and he... It turns out he's also like an opera singer in his part time, in part uh, part time, and um, yeah. And at the end of his run, he just stood up and did some singing. So basically, we that's what we need, James. Amazing. Yeah. Maybe for like, for our res live show, which is happening in April, April Saturday sixth of April. Uh, maybe in a <laughs> half time interval, James can yeah do a bit of a concert. Uh, throughout the day, people tweeting about the show. You see that guy 
carrying a trumpet <laughs> What's it? Really bad story. Yeah. We, we have yeah. a great trumpet peripheral. And it's not a peripheral, mate. It's an instrument. <laughs> not even in a case, just slung over his shoulder. Like yeah, a, no, no, yeah. slung over his shoulder, but it's got like a strap, like, it, like it's a bag over his shoulder, but it's just yeah. on either end of the <laughs> trumpet. shoulder strap on it. Yeah, yeah. Hanging loose. Really battered oh, old. Awesome. And you can swing around and go, <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> last week we talked, I, I, we, I think there's a, a question about what games you guys, or what activities could you guys do in real life after his mention on the mm. stream. Uh, I mentioned, oh, w- wouldn't it be funny if we all worked in the kitchen, <laughs> a really stressful what? kitchen, future exercise, uh, and other people actually tweeted saying, when are you going to do a co-op stream of Overcooked in preparation for your team chef challenge experience? We should probably do that. We should, because Overc- Overcooked 2 has online play, right? Yeah. It does, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we, yeah we, we should really switch. do that. We should definitely do it. Uh, we'll we find, were too busy, we'll, we'll find too busy streaming a far superior game this week, weren't we, boys? Yeah. 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 Well, more we can, we'll we get on to that. The, <laughs> the online app, you know, the Nintendo online app, you know, to, oh, yeah. to voice chat and stuff. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's great. Yeah, we, we should definitely test it out live on that. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll add it to the list. We just need some extra days in, in the week, but we'll that's add it to the list for sure. Um, Paul mm-hmm. Gildier, Gildier. I'm so sorry, Paul. James was spot on his comments re EA and Star Wars. Would be great to get a Star Wars game respecting the property and the player, a bit like PS4 Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Because <laughs> although I, I mean, Spider Man's such a weird game because I loved it and obviously it sold him incredibly well, but it feels like barely anyone in our sort of circles. No, really it's just because really everybody's really sort of sniffy about it, aren't they? Because it's like <laughs> that's why. If it's it a wasn't, shame. A, if it if it wasn't Spider Man and it was anybody else, they'd be all over it like a rash. But it's just because it's like, oh, it's a you know, it's a superhero thing. I'm not interested. That's yeah, what yeah, it's but, about. But then everyone loved like the Batman series. It's different though, isn't it? Batman's yeah. got the whole you know, black cool and he's, he's like kind cool, of thing. Yeah, cool car and. Yeah. That. And the Batarang. Um, yeah. Keeping on the on the uh, Star Wars tip, Kurt Lewin, I'm not sure if you are aware, and I'm sure it might make some of you and the listeners groan, but late last year, Zingna... Oh, f- Z- Zinger. Zinger. What's, <laughs> what's wrong with tonight? tonight? <laughs> I don't, I'm, just for, looking, I'm looking at words. I don't know how this works. <laughs> Zinger. We're given the rights to make Star Wars games on mobile and acquire the operations to the current game that Sean mentioned, Star Wars Commander. Whilst I can't confirm what types of games these will actually be, it's needless to say they will all be free-to-play games. However, what might make people a bit more op- uh, optimistic is the development of the games is being done by a studio where I work called Natural Motion, who are renowned for making some of the best-looking and cinematic games on mobile. I work in the marketing department side of things, but the development team is very passionate about the work and the stuff they make, and it's exciting. I appreciate that Zynga has a bad rap, a bad reputation for monetization, but I think that is held over from the Farmball days, as Natural Motion's current games, CSR 2 and Dawn of Titans, have millions of players returning every day. Hopefully these new free-to-play Star Wars games we're making will prove to be an example of free-to-play done well. I think did, one of the other did reasons just, did why... Just, is this for work, Kurt? Have you just slipped in a yeah, plug? Yeah, I mean, I've heard that for... It's, it's an ad, but, you know, I, I, I'll get... I mean, Natural Motion, game quid, contact. Mate, 40 quid, 40 quid. Yeah, you have 40 um, quid, Natural Motion. <laughs> uh, I was gonna, I'm going back a, a while, but yeah, Natural Motion did... Uh, is it the Backbreaker games ages ago? The one that basically it's an American football game, and it wasn't actually an American football game. It was literally just, here's you charging across the field... And you've got to dodge around, and it was it was the fir- one of the first uses of Euphoria tech, oh, really? um, and it was really good fun. So yeah, yeah, okay. interested to see what they're they're up to now. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll, see, we'll see. in the first that first paragraph, I was about to start slagging it off because it was Zynga, but then <laughs> I now realise that I can't do that uh, because it's a listener. I, <laughs> I was feel, thinking I of sort of um, adding some words and sort of baiting you and waiting for you to, <laughs> to step in. <laughs> Uh, you should but, have said Don Matrix uh, Zinger or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> is he still there? I think he might I have left. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God knows what he's doing these days. Yeah. Probably in some medieval times. Um, David Rush, at David Rush on Twitter. So uh, last week, uh, James mentioned that he plays Red for the... Oh, my God. Okay, I'm quitting a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Red Redford Dead. There we go. <laughs> well, I get, at least that's the episode title sorted out. <laughs> that was taking me really long to do. <laughs> Last week, James mentioned he was playing Red Dead Redemption 2 on his iPad using an app. Loads of people tweeted in, so what is that app? And it's called R Play. Is that correct, James? That's correct, yeah. It's 12 quid on iOS. It's MiFi com- controller compatible. Um, I put out a little image on Twitter just making out James Probably. playing it on a Nokia phone. 
just well, trying to bait me. We again, all had a laugh, but, you know, but then people were like, yeah. and then you send a video, and people were like, actually, this does look right. And I think we got, I think they got a few sales out of it. So, are you still yeah. using it, James? Is it still holding out? I haven't used, I haven't used it this week because I've played barely anything. But you know, it, I will be using it again because it is good. It's um, it works very well, like significantly. So yeah, that's all plays stuff. on iOS, uh, MiFi controller compatible. Uh, or also, you can do that weird um, dual shock thing that James mentioned on last week's show. Yes. Although Matt, I mean, also a lot of people were. You know, saying how you know me playing it this way, they couldn't see what the problem was, and you know, if it was on Switch, you'd be going about how great it was that you could play it that way. Of course, and James, bas- but... basically having a go at you, you know, for like not having <laughs> played the game hardly but at yeah, all. Yeah, like um, oh, someone's like at least he played, at least he played it. I did play the game. Clearly, I played the game. Just, <laughs> just then... can't remember any of it. I remember none of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah just, <laughs> I remember some parts. There's a bit I shoveled some shit. Anyway. Um, uh, anyway, um, SMW's back. Uh, we're talking about streaming, of course, because we've got a whole new streamer schedule. More on that in a minute. I would totally watch Matt stream in Kotor. It even got a 4K upgrade for Xbox One backwards compatible. I mean, I've got we've we, we're, we're streaming a lot of games in the moment. I'm not sure I can stretch to a. I was going to say, listen, 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 please, please RPG. don't tell Matt to stream anymore oh, because no, he will do it. That's the thing, <laughs> some, <laughs> some might say we're streaming too many games at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Some might say. <laughs> um, Gareth Parry um, I just wanted to write a shout out to James regarding his stream he's had me laughing away on a number of times in the two he's done so far with my other half looking at me with a completely baffled look I'd say don't worry about how you think it's going just keep doing them as they're brilliant, brilliantly entertaining uh, I've had half of Deadly Premonition a while back and never got to finish it so I'll be looking forward to seeing the conclusion down the line the stream will definitely be a highlight for weeks to come so yeah, just, I just want to add that in, James. Because I know every that's, week you're like very kind, and I because I, I I feel very weird about that stream. It's um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's an odd one because you see with with all the David Cage stuff, it was really easy to work with those because they're mm-hmm. so bad. Whereas mm-hmm. this is actually not a bad game, really. It's it's very interesting, um, but yeah. it has got a lot of weird stuff, and um, yeah, I'm I'm concerned about where the puzzles are going as well as I'll probably talk about later. It's, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's a weird game, but, it, but, it, but it, it's brilliantly entertaining. It, I mean, I guess like the pacing's all, like, all all off and there's like weird sort of like quests here and there and so you might think it's just a bit of a stilted game, but no, it, it's great to watch. So don't worry about that, James. Do mm-hmm. not worry. Um, Steve Chambers at G-Town Steve on Twitter. A great stream of an odd game from Sean last night. Are we going to hear more <laughs> of your Barry White-esque tones on next week's pod? <laughs> You should explain this, about that. Sean. Yeah, so <laughs> I was just happily streaming away, playing Desert Child, which I'll talk about in a minute. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> at some point, mysteriously, so obviously I had no idea because I, I can't hear what you know what the, the you know the, everyone watching the stream can hear. Um, and then someone, yeah, someone like said in the chat, like this is my favorite kind of Sean, deep Sean. And I was like, what do you mean? What did I say? Something like philosophical or something? I didn't even. Realize. And then yeah, and everyone in the chat was like, mate, your voice sounds fucked. Yeah. And yeah, for whatever reason, my voice it, it went really loud and like pitched down quite yeah. a bit. It was, it was so um, funny. I mean, see, do you know, was I was just... hoping, I was hoping that you were using like one of those you know original Xbox voice masks. You're like. <laughs> Like Dark Master, yeah, or something no, like I, that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Sean wanted to talk so I, trash uh, to yeah. someone. Um, so I basically, yeah, so I unplugged the microphone, plugged it back in. That seemed to clear it, and everyone was really disappointed. But the thing is, <laughs> because I, I have no idea what caused that, there's every chance that will just happen again. I hope it so. does. It, basically, so I, I was, um, I think I, my, I, was, I had your stream on Mabel. I was playing something on my Switch. I was looked down, yeah. and I suddenly heard another voice, and I genuinely thought. <laughs> Maybe someone has to go into, into Discord and like, you have like a mate join the stream. It was like completely different. I was like, who is this? And it was you. I was like, oh my God. It was, it was so, I could barely breathe, Sean. It was so funny. And you're like, oh, what, what's, what's the matter, everyone? Like, nothing's changed. Matt, Matt, you went you weren't for a second like, hang on, is this what he really sounds like? It was, just, it was like, hang on, it, the northern facades are dropped. This is real Sean. <laughs> oh, it's real. I, I put out a video, so it's not, it just go to our computer camp on Twitter and look back a few days. Well, I think I tweeted it last yeah. Wednesday. Uh, so a week, I guess, in this case. But yeah, yeah the, uh, there's a re- really funny video of just like Sean being, just not not realising his voice has totally changed. And then, <laughs> yeah, when like when real Sean came back, I was like, oh, I really missed deep Sean. He was, yeah, he was should great. Have, should have kept. Should have kept him. Well, like I say, I mean, fingers crossed it'll happen again tomorrow. But we'll yeah, see. Yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, James, you should look at that video. It's it's so funny. Oh, yeah. it's, I mean, yeah. maybe, maybe part of it's like you had to be there. But my god, it's just yeah. I I, I can I can breathe. It was incredible. Speaking of <laughs> streaming, we uh, obviously we mentioned a couple of weeks ago a new streaming um, schedule. 
I'm adding another one to the mix because uh, I'm insane. <laughs> because you've got brain problems. Because <laughs> yeah. I've got brain problems. <laughs> anyway, so from tonight, if you listen to this on Wednesday, I'm starting a brand new stream. I'm going to stream Resident Evil 2. Now, I hate both being chased and I hate horror. <laughs> and this is a horror game in which you get chased. So I don't know yeah. what's going to happen, but I just thought... I, I've been looking forward to the game, and I, 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 you know, I played it ages ago. I didn't finish it. I love the first one. I, you know, the ones I can handle. I've loved the Resident Evil games, but, um, and obviously this has got incredible review scores uh, in the last week or so. And mm-hmm. yeah, so I, I might just pass out. I, I might try on stream. I don't know, but anyway, from tonight, if you listen to us on Wednesday, Wednesday nine p.m. Go to our channel, uh, Twitch or TV slash the Computer Game Show. I will be streaming Resident Evil Two. Probably with mascara running down on my face and just crying op- openly. <laughs> um, after me tonight, there's uh, obviously James is streaming Deadly Premonition on Friday at 9. I'm back with Blood on Sundays at 9. And Sean is playing an indie game of his choosing Tuesday at 9. Um, if you have, I'm, I'm going to say this once. I, I'm actually, I might say it at the, end, at the end as well. But if you've got Amazon Prime, we've also got Twitch Prime. Think about going to our channel and giving us a free subscription. We would really, really appreciate that. Yeah, I yeah. should I should do that really, shouldn't I? Yeah, I've got you, one of those. Yeah, you really should. That's the point, yeah. yeah if, I if, assume if you I've two done both it. have <laughs> Amazon Prime, you also have Twitch Prime. Um <laughs> yeah, so just go to our channel, you, you get free sub every month with that, and we really appreciate if you gave it to us. Uh that's it for follow up. It's at Computer Game Pod on Twitter if you wanna tell us tell us how you're feeling about the show or, or how we're doing or things you like, things you hate. Uh or you can email podcast at the computer game show dot com. James. Nice one. News. Um, so, what? No, no, that was, I love, that, that was, was fine. That was a fine transition yeah, until you did that. <laughs> it was going it, it, it fine. Was, it was a strong transition. It. it was. Yeah. It was abrupt. Go on. Anyway, um, <laughs> oh, so the first bit of news we're going to look at is so Nintendo <clears throat> had an indie game presentation this week. Have either of yeah. you seen it? Yes. Uh, no, I, I, I've seen some of the trailers that came out from it. Um, <clears throat> I played one of the I games. I think it was great. Hang I on, did... the new story you've linked to here, James, is just saying, oh, there's going to be a, a, a broadcast tomorrow. Yeah, no, it doesn't actually say what was, what was in it. With the other one. It's fine. <laughs> I've, I've got the list here, so it's <laughs> okay, all right. I'll go, yeah, go yeah. through the list. So, I mean, the standout was probably, well, I thought the standout was probably Wargroove, because that's coming okay. at the beginning of February, and that's basically Advance Wars, isn't it, really? Like, yeah. But a little bit different, and so that, that looks quite good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so it's actually coming out this Friday, isn't it? So only a couple of days' time. Yeah, oh God, is it that soon? Jesus. Apparently, it's cross-platform as well, yeah. um, but I don't know whether that means. I doubt that means cross-platform in the sense of like multiplayer or anything, does it? Oh no, no, it is. It is. So, Surely that's all it can mean. Yeah. So it's um, oh, basically it says here it's cross-play on PC, Switch, Xbox One. Uh, Chucklefish, said, Chucklefish said in a tweet regarding the game's first of February launch. There's no one on cross-play with PS4, but that's not much of a yeah. surprise given Sony's you know recent stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Multiplayer, cross-platform, PC, Switch, and Xbox One. You yeah. know, so, so that, I mean, I'm pretty good. I'm quite looking forward to that because, yeah, I love. Yeah, the like I, yeah, obviously, I've talked about it in previous weeks. I hope that brief experience I had with it was just a bit of a bad demo. I'm hoping oh, no, the full game to... and getting introduced properly to it will will make a massive difference. Because yeah, when, when did you play a demo? Um, it was Res? resed not last year, but the year before, and it was oh. just like. Yeah, that's I think I said the other week. We basically just threw you in. And it was like here's all the unit types in one go. Deal with it, um, yeah. and it was it was way too much to deal with. So well, hopefully there that, be is, build up, that is there? yeah yes. yeah, and then presumably there will be. So fingers crossed. Okay, so there was that. So that looks good. Um, mm. There was also Double Kick Heroes, which is like another. It's a side-scrolling bullet hill shooter that's coming oh, in yeah. the summer. Uh, Forager, which was a top-down dungeon crawler. No release date on that one. And there was also this pixel art like side scroller called Inmost. Did you see that? Oh yeah, this looked really interesting. Mm-hmm. There's like three different playable characters or something, and the animation looked uh, like absolutely outstanding. So interested. Yeah, and then yeah. Unruly Heroes, which is oh, yeah. is it is it by the same people like some of the same people that did Rayman because it looks well, I, identical. I wondered this. Yeah, it looks really similar, doesn't it? But um, also, isn't it like um, like the Monkey King? Like I was going to say, yeah, it's Journey to the West again. Yeah, isn't it? that's that's <laughs> what it looked like. Yeah, and it's yeah because um, yeah, I saw that and I thought that that really really looks like Rayman, like yeah. uncomfortably <laughs> so. And uh, yeah. yeah, which was it was a good it, game. It, but is I there a release date yes. for that? Yeah, no. Okay. Oh no, sorry, no. Yeah, there is. Out, it's out now. It's oh, wow, okay. out right now. Yeah, you can. It, you can it, do you think it's now. weird that they just did this? Obviously, we're waiting for a pro- in inverted commas proper direct. Yeah. I mean, like, would I mean, like? 
I guess normally you'd think, oh, they could just put this in the end of the direct, but they obviously yeah, think what's the reason like, cause not they've to done, do that. Because they've done these before, but they've had they've been more substantial than this one. This one was fairly light, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was I quite thought. long, but it yeah, not really a lot happened though. As in, yeah. there wasn't it wasn't a lot of sort of like bang, bang, bang. You know, loads of really good stuff. I thought. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they yeah. had that. There was also another game called Cross Code, which is another apparently another bullet hell style game. This looks um, really good. Yeah, though, I I, when I saw yeah, that like girl, bit. the mention of that, loads of people were like, "Thank God, it's finally here! It's one of my favorite indie games of last year or the year before." <laughs> I saw loads of people yeah. get really pumped about this. So this year's Hollow Knight, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we got not more... eligible for the game of the year. No, so don't get excited, James. <laughs> for sure. Well, uh, come on, Dave's not here. It's, uh, it's fine. <laughs> That's what we want. Dad's not here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting Super Hot back VR back in. I'm putting, I'm, I'm putting, I'm putting Hollow Knight on for this year. Like, I'm, sure, I'm sure there's an expansion coming out. I can get it in that there way. Is, there actually is. There's like paid DLC coming out for it this year. There you year, go. Yeah. It's got paid mm. DLC. You can include it. It's uh, okay. fine. Hey, but only the DLC part. Yeah. <laughs> so then we have more Goat Simulator again. I mean, uh, and I, why, I don't... why do I hate this game? <laughs> I've never I don't played I, it. I, I played it I just... obviously because it was like free. You know, you got like an Xbox version of it that was free. But uh, okay. I didn't really see the point, or I didn't really enjoy it that much. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah, just the the sense of humour just really rubs me up the wrong way for some reason. She's like, oh, yeah. it's a goat and it's doing things you wouldn't it expect is. It's, a goat to how, do. Ah. It's that sort of like, look how wacky this is. You yeah, know, that, that a kind game of thing. designed for people to stream rather than yeah. necessarily enjoy. Yeah. I believe the way that's streaming. coming. Does someone say stream? <laughs> You're right, mate. Your ears just okay, up. Okay, new Thursday night stream, the, the goat <laughs> one. And then there's also SteamWorld Quest, the Hand yeah. of Gilgamec, which is a this is a turn-based battle game, yeah? So this is different to the other SteamWorld. It's say, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, SteamWorld Universe is getting yet another game type. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, what was it like? It was like a turn-based card battler, but it was sort of like a medieval setting, but they're all still steam-powered robots. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I, I'm about to say with genuine sincerity, I am interested to see how this fits into the Steambot universe. Because <laughs> 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 um, they, do, they do all tie together somehow. Um, so yeah, I'm intrigued. Plus, I mean, yeah, I'm up for a turn-based um, card battler anyway. So yeah, mm-hmm. cool. So that's that's coming on Switch first as well, but like yeah. later in the year. So. Yeah. I but mean, that I, was still, I would still rather have SteamWorld Heist 2 um but they don't seem to be in any rush to make that so hey mm-hmm. uh, but, but yeah, yeah that was that, it wasn't it that, that was... was it there was very little else that was really of any interest so mm. that's kind of a shame really and then and then we had the big news which kind of dropped i think was this before or after the indie showcase i think it was wasn't it after oh, this is well after yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. A couple of days, so maybe maybe this is why they wanted to get the indie stuff out of the way first then they dropped this and so this was <laughs> Met, um, so metroid uh, metroid prime 4 the development for this has been rebooted from scratch and they're going to start again. Mm. And so it was first, I mean, Metro Prime 4 was first revealed in 2017 and all they showed was a logo. You remember yeah. that was at the at the E3. Yeah, massive logo. And, yeah, and now the development team has now been switched um, to Retro Studios again. So they did the Prime trilogy and yeah. it's got the same producer. It's Kentucky Tanabe who's going yeah. to be coming back to do it. And it was Shinya Takahashi made this announcement, and it was a really weird announcement. I mean, in the ten- sense that you don't see this very often from companies, like coming out and just being like, yeah, actually, it was it was bad. And, it's, a bit uh, like, it's a bit like, you know, when you, your parents are separating and, <laughs> <laughs> and they sit you down and it's like, you know, me and your mom love you very much, yeah. and it's nothing you've done wrong. Mm-hmm. And you're just sitting there like, oh, come on, what's <laughs> happening? Where's this going? <laughs> Tell me the truth. Then, like, yeah, I'll, I'll level with you. Cut oh, to is... the chase, and that's that exactly what this video was. It was You're yeah, like, Mum and like, Dad, at least show you... me a trailer. At least, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like five minutes of like you know, we, you know that we at Nintendo always do our absolute best to bring you the best games possible, and something's not working out. We need to address that. And uh, yeah. <laughs> five minutes later, we've binned it. We're starting again. <laughs> oh, by the way, yeah. um, I mean, it's interesting. So, yeah. I, I mean, I guess I can say now because I'd. I'd heard like a lot of rumors that From Software were working on it, yeah. um, which presumably was always bollocks. Um, from the way they talked about it, it, it sounded like it was just Nintendo doing it internally. I guess, but mm-hmm. I, I suppose it wasn't I clear. Thought, I thought it had been confirmed that it was it was Bandai Namco. Bandai Nam- yeah, so it. Th- those are okay. Oh, that might have 
And then yeah, um, so I can't fit, remember who, but some some journalists sort of went and 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 basically I've, I'm not sure if it's like hard or confirmation, but basically many many sources basically confirmed the same thing. That, yeah, it was banned on Namco, mm. but that had uh, okay. never been See, publicly confirmed by Nintendo. It's good that it's going back to retro because the Metro Prime trilogy was excellent, but yeah. also the fact that as they said, development time is going to be extensive. We're not going to see this, are we? On on this generation of hardware, probably. Like, it's be way I can't off, imagine we're going to see this on, on this Switch. No way, it'll be up. <laughs> I mean, it, it'll be on the Switch three. too. If they're starting from three, scratch, okay. this is at least like two or three years. Well, at least three years away. At I'd least imagine. three years yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you'd, you'd Which think is so. a, a huge. I, mean, change. I, I love the idea that, like, if it was, if it was from software working on it, like. It wasn't that it was bad. It was just that they wanted to do things with Metroid that Nintendo were just like, no way. Yeah, that's not yeah. happening. <laughs> Put the bonfires away. It's not yeah. happening. <laughs> well, the other thing, though, which is weird, the, sort of the knock-on from this, mm-hmm. is because Retro was supposed to be working on that unannounced Star Fox racing game. You know, that one oh, that yeah. was rumoured at E3. <laughs> so nobody knows what's happened to that. I mean, hopefully that was just a fever dream. And that's I was going to say, now. it sounds... yeah. That's not what the Star Fox series needs to really bring it back, is it? Between this and Starlink. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But then also, yeah, yeah. the other thing is, I mean, I've, I've seen a couple of stories from, like, Nintendo fan websites and everything that are like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, the, the Prime Trilogy is going to get re-released soon, like on, yeah. on Switch. They're going to... But, I mean, I don't know how much of that is wishful thinking and how much of that is, is reality well, wasn't there is going to happen. A... There was a new story going around today that, like, it's been finished for ages and they're just not bringing it out yet or something. I mean, now would be a good time to drop it, wouldn't it? I was going to say, yeah, we need something, something that development yeah, yeah. and Because uh... I, I never played 2 or 3, and I got, I think 2 was like a bit of a misstep, and then 3 two, was really good. Is yeah, that... 2 yeah. was not good. Okay. Um, I really didn't enjoy 2. The mm-hmm. first one's fantastic, but the third yeah. one I bought, but I never played it, so okay. I'd be well up for, for going through these again, because yeah, the first I, one yeah, is yeah. fantastic. I um I played a bit of, uh, obviously I didn't finish it, but I played a bit of the first one, and I, I really enjoyed it, but yeah, I didn't, didn't go back after that, so if they release a trilogy, I'll be... I'll be really interested to try that out for sure. Oh man, mm. it had such good music the first game, like yeah. such good music. It was it was really good. But, but, but why do you think they've done this now? I mean, it, was it getting to the point where like they they were sick of the emails or the questions because everyone's like, "Well, it's twenty nineteen game, right?" That's I guess what they said. Yeah. So well, I guess so. Maybe maybe we're we're expecting like a direct sometime soon, aren't we? So if they'd have come out with a direct with no information about. You know, if they'd have like said, "This is what we got coming," yeah, you know, this that's year, a good point. Actually, and yeah. then there's no metal in there. Yeah. It's just like get ahead of it and just be like, "Yes, yeah, that's, yeah. that's done." That's and equally, happening. if they'd made this announcement as part of a, a direct, that would have been the headline, regardless of yes. what else was yeah. shown. So, yeah, no, it makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, what, it's what like three, four years. I mean, three what, years what, probably. What, 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 what's <laughs> the gap between? You probably don't remember, but what was the gap between the first Metroid Prime and the second one? What, were they huge gaps or? It wasn't massive, no. Because I mean, obviously they. All three were on the were on the GameCube, so oh wow, okay. yeah, so oh, they'll all have been the so no, the, no, wait, yeah, was corruption on the GameCube? I don't remember. Uh, I think it was initially, and then there was a Wii port, wasn't there? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, obviously, they'll have all the tools and the engine and stuff will have been built for the first, and then just carried on, so that will have saved some time. Whereas yeah. this will be from scratch, so yeah, I don't know. Disappointing though. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a shame, uh, but I'll hopefully the right decision in the long yeah, term. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, ultimately, we all want a good game, and there's no point in rushing yeah. out a shit one. I mean, yeah. yeah exactly. another, I mean, it's, it'll be another three or four years, but just what is, you know, yeah, yeah. It is what it is. I but mean, we'll manage. If they come out with the the direct, and it turns out Animal Crossing's coming out by like April or something like that, then I don't <laughs> care. What? <laughs> that's not going to happen. That's a full game. Not, that's, no. not, that's an autumn game, isn't it? Well, so they, they stand up yeah. and go, look, we don't want Metroid to be shit, but I mean, ah, it's Animal Crossing, who cares? <laughs> yeah. Have it now. It's, it's out now. It's also on phones. It doesn't even work, but yeah. fuck it. <laughs> okay, right, well, um, the next story, I, do you know, I'd forgotten I put this story in the thing, and now I've got to try and explain <laughs> it, and it's like ridiculous. I mean, um, I've, but I've, is... I've seen the headline, and I mean, you could go a lot further with that. Yeah. Because <laughs> Facebook accused of intentionally misleading children. How about yeah. everyone on yeah. Earth? <laughs> yeah. About everything. <laughs> It's very Sorry, true. James, but this, this is even worse, though, because it's, well, okay. it's not even worse. See, you're right. I mean, it's just. I don't quite yeah. know why I added this into the running order, but I'm interested to see what the deal is. Well, okay. So, according to Reveal, which is a website for investigative like reporting, mm-hmm. they obtained court documents that said there was a class action lawsuit ordered by the U.S. District Court judge that Facebook had orchestrated a campaign to dupe children and their parents into paying thousands of dollars to maximize like profits for. Stuff like Angry Birds, 
Petville and another game called Ninja Saga. I mean, as you can tell, I'm reading this, but don't, I, <laughs> I, I, I want to avoid like making mistakes because yeah, it's like yeah, it's insane. So anyway, this practice apparently is referred to as friendly fraud. So that's, that's, oh, that's friendly fraud in yeah, a nice color, <laughs> colorful font. Yeah. yeah, I love friendly yeah, crimes. Yeah, it's, it's, of it's a nice one. So it's fraud, but it's friendly. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> it's so it's okay. So what this is is that children were allegedly encouraged to make purchases without their parents' permission, mm-hmm. but to the point where they weren't aware that they were spending real money. So it's the whole thing where Jesus. you have a parent whose credit card is like attached to Facebook. I mean, I don't know mm-hmm. who would do that, but yeah. you know, people do. And then you know they're buying like I don't know whatever the the currency is for that, and then they don't realise that they're actually getting billed for it. So then it gets worse because then apparently in some cases, Facebook employees were allegedly told to deny uh, refund requests, and they apparently called the children whales was was the other thing you know which is you know the term that they you know for like free to play players you yeah, know, yeah, like yeah people like Matt yeah, yeah that was and... only one month in my life. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, some so some parents have pursued the claims with the US uh, Better Business Bureau in such high numbers that the FTC like raised a flag and said that this is like deceptive business practices. Mm-hmm. And the reason they did this is because you know like you have like credit card chargebacks that people do, yeah. whereby you know if you you want to get your money back, so you go to your credit card and say can you give it back. And apparently, if it's um, like if on a, some product or service or whatever, there's a chargeback rate of like two percent. Then it's considered okay. There's something wrong here. Like something's mm-hmm. not right here. But apparently, in this case, the chargeback rate was nine percent. So <laughs> okay. it was wow. It was, it was significantly worse. Yeah. And apparently, Rovio <laughs> said that the rate did seem very high, but that maybe this seemed normal for Facebook. You know, that this was just like a kind of thing. And the other thing about it is that fifty percent of like users receive no receipts either for these in-app purchases, Jesus. so they didn't even know that it's happening. It's just sort yeah, of so going it on. Wouldn't have even been, they wouldn't have even realised. Oh yeah, my, my child's bought something because I've seen an email come through. Brilliant. Yeah, and then it turns out that also ninety-three percent of, of parents had no idea that children could make payments without further authorization. So, I mean, that's the kind of thing where I mean, you can do that, can't you? With like, presumably, I can think you could do it with Android, but you can definitely do it with iOS. Like, if you don't set it up right, then. Yeah, they can just keep making purchases or whatever without you, you know, without you having to intervene or anything. Yeah, yeah. But I don't it's, know what the. It's pretty easy to get refunds on Android generally. Um, yeah. I think, I think it used to be longer. I think now you have like fifteen minutes after a purchase is made to rescind it. Um, oh really? I think it used to be a couple of hours, but yeah. Yeah, you see, yeah. with with uh, yeah, with the App Store, like Apple's one, you get I think it's two weeks or so. I think it is. Oh, like, really? And then, and then, yeah, and then you can, because I've done it like a couple of times. So, you so this is, so yeah, what I'm talking about is literally like you don't even have to talk to anyone. It's just the, what used to be the, you know, the download or install button on, on yeah. the Play Store just becomes a refund button. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. yeah, for for the Apple one, you just have to like, you go into your purchase history and just say, yeah, I want a refund. And then you just, okay. that's it. You just click it and it, it yeah, it goes oh, right, through okay. pretty much all the time. Yeah. So anyway. Remember, you're talking about the main apps rather than in-app purchases. I mean, I'm sure that's yeah. much more of a nightmare to yeah. get refunds on. Possibly, no, no, it's, yeah. it's the same. Like for iOS, it's the same. Like you can okay. get refunds on that as well. But anyway, so Facebook apparently told developers to manage these complaints by offering free virtual items. So it's it's <laughs> it's similar to like the Fallout, yeah, you know, a virtual canvas bag. Yeah, just like yeah, for, for this, and then that will keep them quiet or whatever. And they've also said that they're dealing with it. Shall I read the the quote from Facebook? Um, the whole thing. It says, Facebook works with parents and experts to offer tools for families navigating Facebook and the web. As part of that work, we routinely examine our own practices and in 2016 agreed to update our terms and provide dedicated resources for refund requests related to purchases made by minors on Facebook. And that's it. So they're basically doing nothing. It's going to call. So yeah, basically, it's, yeah. it's going to call. So like, guys, so. we changed it in 2016. Yeah, come that on. That was only three years ago. Come on. Well, they they talked about how they were going to add like the thing, so you had to like add in, you know, look at you know, add like the last four digits of your credit card again, and all that if you were making you know, purchases right, yeah. and stuff. But either way, I mean, it's Facebook and it, it's um, scummy, yeah, hey ho, allegedly scummy, yeah, allegedly. Yeah. So it's, <laughs> let's not get the lawyers on this, Sean. Not yeah. yet. <laughs> Okay, so the next story is another problem thing that, I mean, I, this kind of fits in with the game that we played uh, mm-hmm. over the weekend, because Bioware have been talking about Anthem's demo problems that they had. <laughs> and this this came from Chad Robertson, who's the head of live services, and he said that although the VIP demo hadn't gone as planned, he said this wasn't because they'd underplanned. 
This this was not this right. was not the case at all. He said this this is the quotation, he said, To ensure stability, we intended to manage our servers to match the player population as it grew. Overall, we had excess capacity prepared for population ex- increases and continue to do so. That said, what's important is that all parts of the game work as designed to meet players' needs, and that did not happen in the opening hours. So most in the of the opening problems, hours. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay, well yeah, all right, we'll we'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> most of the problems like yeah. such as they have the infinite loading so yeah, yeah we suffered that yeah. platform connections that didn't appear like apparently mm-hmm. all of those problems were they didn't appear when they'd done testing these were all like new new sort of issues right and, uh, yeah but either way the actual i mean the demo did pretty well because apparently like on twitch they had like 300,000 concurrent viewers and yeah it's and as a, like as a thank you to people that braved the demo they're giving away like an additional javelin skin Ooh, if you pick up the game, so uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean um, some mm. some people I know couldn't get in for most of the weekend, and others played it pretty much flawlessly. So, but you know, it, I mean, these things are, I guess, always like to happen. It, this was the VIP demo that was happening this last weekend uh, that mostly required people to either pre-order the game, and you got a code, and you also got three spare codes to share with mates, or you got it through EA Access, or. Um, or EA's uh, PC, uh, was it his Origin Premier? Whatever it is, yeah, the pieces yeah, of yeah. Uh, Next weekend, or this coming weekend, sorry, as you're listening to this, that's the open demo. So you would think okay. many, many more people will be playing that. Uh, so it'd be interesting to see what's been fixed and how that one functions. Um, yeah. yeah, I definitely had the infinite loading thing where it would, I would join a mission and it would get to like 95% of the loading bar and then just keep loading. Just stop. Uh, but for yeah. that, I just like quit the demo, reopened and it, it put me back in. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, these things always like to happen. I mean, it's better they do it, better it happens now than on day one of the game, but it's not great if you want to get people psyched to play this thing. Well, especially calling can't. it like a VIP demo as well. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> that makes it sound worse, doesn't it? Because it's like. You know, you suppose you valued customers, and you, yeah, it's you're basically. Well, I mean, you yeah, are, this is like, the uncomfortable thing, you. isn't it? That yeah, so like, fair play to him for not calling it a beta because that does annoy me a bit. You know, because so many places started using the word just to put out a demo that is clearly a, you know, it's a marketing tool at the end of the day. But it was like, oh, let's call it a beta, and people sort of feel like they're, you know, they're insiders and they're like yeah. really involved. And it's like, no, they just you're just being sold something. Um, so fair play to him for calling it a demo. However clearly wasn't fit for purpose that's the thing and, yeah and like at the end of the day yeah if it's like oh pre-order to get access you're essentially selling it um so it's i mean yeah, but i saw those people saying oh they should have called it a beta because how broken it is i think yeah and, but i do get a whole like oh it's not a beta it's clearly a demo you just games out in a mm. matter of weeks uh but then mm. I, I, we'll call it like a stress test call it like something yeah. test like okay yeah. so i know yeah, yeah, yeah. what this is what the function this is you know, and and I think that that helps people a bit more. If you call it a stress test, and it doesn't it doesn't open. You think, well, you know, stress test that's fine. But a demo to me feels like okay, the game's done. This is basically the game. This is just a small snapshot. But obviously, mm-hmm. tons of things have changed in the game, such as uh, how much it cost to buy things. You start at level ten. Other other elements yeah. were uh, changed uh, to make it easier or better for the demo. So yeah, um, and and we played it. We should probably get back we into did. that. We did. News. Uh, yeah, uh, there's, there's one, one other, more. Bit, there's yeah. one last piece which I, I just want to throw in here because Eurogamer did like a massive like feature on Starbreeze and all I the problems that been there. Wasn't the last news story, James? That was it. it no, it was <laughs> going to be, but then I added this in just a, a second. You ago. could have switched. Um, you could so. have, you you have control over what order you do them in. That's the thing. I know, I know, but I was too lazy to do that. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> it's uh, unbelievable. The lead up was. Oh. <laughs> Anyway, I know it was. It, that's the thing because I even like when I first like was organising news, I was like, yeah, I should probably put that last, and we can get straight into we what you can you've been playing. Straight into it, it. Yeah, exactly. it would have been but, good, but here it we would are. have been so <laughs> good, wouldn't it, Sean? So good, <laughs> it would. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, this this is still worth talking about. So anyway, Eurogamer had like a big feature about Starbreeze and all the problems there are there, and it's it's massive. But it's probably I mean I haven't read the whole thing, but it, it almost certainly looks like it is worth reading. But Video Gamer have like done a couple like a little bit of a summary of like some of the um the stuff that's happened there, and they talked specifically about The Walking Dead and how that was uh, like a flop. So apparently they said that the team knew that this game was going to flop because <laughs> this is the quote: "It says everyone knew it was going it was going to tank." Uh, it says, no matter how much you polish a turd, it's still a turd. It was never going to get any better than it was. It was always hacked. And they said the reason for this was that 
there was a they they were going to use a new engine called Valhalla, which then did was apparently near unusable, and then they had to switch to Unreal Engine four, and so then they had to turn around the whole project in eighteen months, like with like a design team that were only like ten percent familiar with the engine, like according to this, and yeah, they said it's a beta game because they made it in a year and a half and then just had to release it, so they were kind of knew it was it was uh, things were not going well, but I'd, I'd recommend probably having a look at the full Eurogamer article because it looks fascinating. Yeah, um, it's massive. All the issues there. Yeah. But hopefully everything will work out, yeah, you know, for people yeah. you know, that are dealing with it. Fingers crossed. And that's right. it. What have we been playing? Should we just <laughs> yeah, all let's just playing? all talk about Anthem? Um, yeah, Anthem. So we streamed it on Saturday night, we which did. is my bright bright idea because mid last week we were all really excited about it, and it seemed like a good idea. Um, and then we all played a bit. I mean, I know we're, we're a bit. I mean, Matt, you were more enthusiastic than yeah, well, myself I just, and James, weren't you? I just, it's really easy to like hate on this. And some people might it say it's good reason. <laughs> I just, no, no, but it's like, oh, <laughs> snarky. It's like a Destiny ripoff. And yes. Matt, it is. But, okay. it, you can't say no, it's that, like that, a Destiny ripoff. That in and of it itself, is. I'm okay with. Mm. It's, that, yeah, okay. So reasons I probably, I don't know, hurdles this game had to get over that most games don't, right? Is that, yeah. Of course, it's going to get compared to Destiny 2 and Warframe and, you know, Division 2 is on the horizon. That's only like a month later. And because these are all, okay, they're not the same. I'm not saying that you can only play one of them. Just realistically, in terms of the time they ask of you, you know, these are like full-on like hobby games and they they want you to play them to the exclusion of other of other things. So I get it that, you know, like, because that, that's my personal experience is that I this needed to be good enough to like unseat destiny two from my life because I'm still playing destiny two every week, still really enjoying it. I've already bought this year's season pass. So, um, you know, so I need to be like pulled away from destiny two. That said, if this was like as good, but had a Bioware story, that'd be all right. I'd pay 35, 40 quid for that. And then just knock through the story and then probably not bother with the end game stuff. But, but I, you know, that, that's a hurdle that it has to get over, which most new games don't like if this came out before destiny even existed, we'd probably all be a bit more enthusiastic. The other thing is that, yeah, technical issues in the demo were pretty unforgivable. Um, but they like, you know, that was a real barrier to enjoyment when every time you're trying to load a new level, there's basically a 70% chance it's just not going to work and you have to quit out again and go back in um the frame rate was bad like yeah. it wasn't like offensive it was just like this is out in a month like was the- <laughs> when when you um, consider like because like david sent us that video didn't he of like the un, un you know the unveiling of like yes the Anthem trailer yeah and then it's like they're doing that whole like this is using in-game footage and all that kind of thing you know mm. and it's like this is what the game actually looks like yeah. that was not the game i played on saturday no at all. <laughs> it's 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 i mean it was like a sort of a no man's sky situation like that yeah like i mean yeah. it still looks very nice but yeah. nowhere near as good as that that was shown off like with yeah. that whole like this is in-game footage etc <laughs> yeah i mean you know it's one thing if they say oh it's in engine rather than in-game. yeah and then at least you're like okay so they've it is technically running in the engine, just they might have pulled a few strings and yeah, made I'd it work. I wonder these demos um, are talking but, about to like render demos because at least then we're not going to get our hopes up. Just okay, yeah. I know it's rendered <laughs> fine. Don't say it was in engine. Oh, this is what it's going to look like. It's not. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, and the other reason, you know, people, i.e., us, certainly me and James, are maybe a bit prejudiced about it. Prejudiced about it is that it's from EA, who do not have a great history of supporting games that don't do yeah. quite as well as they were hoping. Um, so, you know, if this was coming from Ubisoft, who've been great at that, I'd be like, do you know what? It might not be perfect at launch, but I bet you in a year's time, it'll be a belter because it's EA. I mean, again, maybe this is unfair. Maybe they know exactly what they're releasing and that it is going to take some work. Um, yeah, it's yeah, hard not I, to think I, I that think they're, they're just going to chuck it. Yeah, like, I, I do totally understand what you're saying. Like Ubisoft have done that with you know with, mm. with Siege and with uh, with Division. Uh, so yeah. another, another, another game I'm thinking of forgetting about as well. So Ubisoft have a track record of doing that, but EA have got to go into this knowing it, that they know it's a Destiny like <laughs> game. They know Destiny itself mm. has had you know a very up and down like two or three or four year history. They know that mm. to make these games a success. The devs have got to listen to the, the the feedback from the community every day and work with the community to make make the best game they can. They've got to mm. constantly work on it and improve it and deliver content. Like they they can't expect us to to drop this and then oh, sorry as in like release this and then mm. 
and then that's it. If it doesn't do well in six months, then they'll drop it because they've yeah. they need a hit. Man, big I style. think. Mm. And no, I, they I, don't need a hit. That's well, bullshit. Yeah, but, the, <laughs> okay, like, like, but like the Battlefront games but, didn't do amazingly well. Battlefront Two got Matt, killed because of Matt, all like, the listen. hang on, hang on, all the <sighs> all the uh, <laughs> transactions and stuff. Like yes, you they've got just, FIFA, know, but like if it was at EA needs. Yes, they got a big FIFA. One. Do you know and, how and, much FIFA makes? And Madden. It's like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I mean, apart from like the FIFA crowd, which I think is a very specific audience, they only think there's a, a, a you know. Uh, they need one against a very specific a, audience of most people. Yeah, I was, going, yeah, I, I, I was myself saying that. But, it's a, but they want a game as a service game, and FIFA doesn't feel like that to most people. And, and Matt, have they you need not, a hit. do you not know about Ultimate of Team? Of course I know of it. I was but say, I'm yeah. just saying, EA need a hit. And they don't need a hit. I, I mean, think, they I want a hit because they want to make say, more yeah. money. Yeah. But it's, it's not about like the credibility of EA is not on the line here. Like it's, they have no credibility. Like you know, it's it's, it's not. Can't sink not, any lower. Than it's exactly. It's not like a thing. I mean, they have a history of just knifing stuff if it's not coming. You know, if it's not going well. Yeah. There's all those developers and all those studios that have all been like shut down when mm. they haven't reached like some ridiculous targets. I mean, remember like what happened with Dead Space with that series and yeah. how. You know, they they had insane like hopes for what that was going to be, and then when it didn't like quite reach what they wanted, they were pretty quick to sort of just bin the whole thing off. I, you see, you're saying about this. The thing with Anthem is it's pretty clear that they saw like Destiny, like Destiny One when that came out, and saw that that was that. I mean, for all the problems that Destiny had, that created a buzz when it first came out. Oh, definitely, like, there yeah. was a big. There was a big thing like around around that game, and it's pretty clear that EO was like, "We need a part of that." Whereas all this time has now like gone past, and things have evolved and changed, and it feels like this game has come out, and it's it's still reacting to the first Destiny. If you see what I mean, yeah, this is how it feels to me. And I mean, it's you see, I have, as as Sean said, I haven't got a problem with it looking like Destiny, playing to a degree like Destiny or whatever, but it's just so derivative, and there was so little there that I felt was sort of new or sort of innovative really it was just it felt like such a copy of like of like Destiny like even to the point of like you know like the way that like health bars were displayed and stuff like that it was insane like mm. playing playing like that and there just wasn't I didn't think there was enough there I mean it, as I said when we were playing it this has made me want to play Destiny 2 again um, because <laughs> you know Destiny 2 at least that had really really fun gunplay and everything this I wouldn't say really does like to agree it's it's fine there's nothing mm. wrong with this game at all it's not a bad game by any stretch of the imagination but it's also it doesn't inspire like I don't yeah feel. I mean like, it's... it might sound like I've been defending this game but I agree with you wholeheartedly I mean I I, so I even all the footage I've seen up to now I'm just like I just haven't got it. I just can't get excited about this game at all on a 4K. Maybe the demo would do it. But yeah, it's just... It, I mean, uninspired is probably the wrong word to use, but I'm just like, uh, I've just got nothing in me I, to, to feel excited about this game. And you're right, like, Destiny has up, has, up, has, up, has had ups and downs. I, I've loved it and I haven't played it recently, sadly. But to say what you want about Destiny, the gunplay, everyone agrees, is incredible. That That will never stop feeling fun. And so the core gameplay loop of Destiny... Uh, just feels amazing. Uh, this didn't feel very fun, or didn't no, maybe want other... to go back to it uh, at all. Really, um, it doesn't do anything. The other major wrong problem for me, I thought, just, with this, whatever. You see, the other major problem I thought this had was that it. You see, it felt like when we were playing, it felt like it lacked focus as well. Like yeah. when we were undertaking missions, there was no indication really of what we were supposed to be doing. Really, also because although like having those vast, massive, open like arenas is fun, you know, like for flying around or whatever, it makes it really like sort of less interesting for combat. I feel because you're being yeah. like attacked from all like all different sort of angles you can't get a beat on where people are coming from in yeah. destiny it's it was a lot more focused like when you're when you're engaging groups yeah and definitely everything. like you know where you... your useful cover is and stuff like exactly. you're always reading the environment whereas this was just like wow well, there's a fucking tree there and a rock and a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's just that that also felt like far less focused and like far i mean again not a massive problem it's fine it's mm. absolutely fine but there's just not enough there and this is why i mean i think this is going to come out I don't. I think this is going to flop like big time, like when it comes out, because there's not enough there. Yeah, see, I, and, I, like, I disagree been, with you there. I mean, you can pick you can pick up Destiny two for very like cheap now, even with like you know like expansions and stuff. I was looking the other day; it's like twenty quid or whatever. You know, you can get like the you know okay. and whatever, which is fine. This is coming out at like full price, 
and it's going up against like already an incumbent in like Destiny, also free to play like Warframe and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What's the hook to buy this like for full price, knowing that it's not great like to begin with and that it's got a lot of problems? Why would you take the risk? Like why? Yeah, I, what I would love to know is, I mean, I'm sure loads of people who have loved this demo and they're ridiculously psyched for this game. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I, people I have been to enjoying know, it. Like, and... Why? And that's not like at all but why, but I just want to know <laughs> what's like, wrong with them. I want yeah. to know like, what, 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 what they're so psyched about. Maybe I'm missing something. Well, no, but... it's, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with oh, it. This it's is the thing because I, I gather I like know. why would I want to know? I, I love to I love to hear people listening to this. You know, meet tweets at computer game pod or emailing. Uh, just like I want to know why really because it just seems fine. And whereas other games, Destiny in this case, which are out there doing better things, what's out there? What does Anthem do that you're really truly psyched about? Because I couldn't really see it myself. Mm. yeah i mean i as I, I think i said briefly on the stream i gather there is more to the combat there's this whole system of um priming and detonating enemies so like certain abilities will prime an enemy and then if someone else uses a detonator it then does a shitload of damage and has like other effects depending on the combination you've done that all sounds really cool but none of that was explained in the demo it wasn't even like okay so you're playing as this class these are your priming abilities these are your detonators this is how to use them. There was just nothing. It was like when you first load the demo up, it's like, here's a guide how to control your javelin. And then you click on it and it tries to open the fucking web browser. And it's like, nope, nope, forget it. Yeah. Not, not, yeah, not interested. They said, they said <laughs> I'm not sure if it was in a statement or one of the blogs, but they said, yeah, like obviously you start at level 10. So there's no, there's no tutorials. There's no information. Yeah. It's like, well, if you want to sell people in this game, it would be nice if you said, here's how you start. I mean, I didn't really yeah. see the point. And like, if- I, you know, I understand that you know game development being what it is making a demo isn't just a case of like oh we'll just copy and paste like this chunk of it and <laughs> let people download that i know it doesn't work like that but this needed yeah like it like destiny did this really well in that it was like right here's basically what you'll be doing in this demo you'll level up really quickly just so you get a feel of like you know how much you're going to improve as you play the game and stuff um and everyone got a good sense of what that game was going to be like for better or worse um Whereas this was just like I don't, I still don't feel like I know what the game is. Yeah. Like it's, <laughs> I feel like I don't really know how I mean, the combat's supposed to work. I don't really know how. Like I, I did start to get into the crafting and upgrading and stuff, which was fine. Um, but the menus were still a bit of a pain in the ass, a bit unresponsive and and shit. Yeah. Um, but even like the open world stuff. I mean, one of the things that irritated <laughs> me was the fact that you, like you couldn't set waypoints. Yeah, I mean, what's that? Weapons on the map. Yeah, that's, and that's it's like insane. because it, you know, it says like, oh, you can do a mission, or you can just go in free play mode. I'm like, well, why? Is there any point in going in free play mode? Like, what's the, what's the benefit of that? Like, it yeah. wasn't, wasn't, doesn't, you know, wasn't guiding you towards like, well, here's what you could do. This would be useful for this reason, or but there's none of that. Whereas Destiny's really clearly like, look at your map. If it's got a big fucking yellow marker on it, you'll get something good for doing it. Um, well, to play of Devil's Advocate, I mean, Destiny's had like three years of development, and although well, say, yeah, well, this hang is on, why, thing, yeah. why, on, why isn't Anthem learning from Destiny's mistakes? And I think we actually asked that ourselves mm. two or three weeks ago. You know, Anthem's got to have learned. Yeah. What have they learned really from Destiny? Uh, yeah, the waypointing, I'm sure they'll patch that in. But um, the thing that annoyed me so. about the open world stuff is that you also have limited boost for when you're flying, so you can't just bomb around the whole place. And you see, to an extent, I I wanted that because you know I've talked about this before where it's like well if it was just infinite then you just you'd never touch the ground would you you'd just fly around and, and you know forever yeah, I get and that it, would but be it. Nice demo. but it's yeah yeah true plus it, it but it is very limited isn't it like sometimes you'll see a cliff and you're like, oh cool i'll fly up there and then you make it two-thirds of the way and then crap out but it's also yes. i mean the other thing that i was disappointed with what from what we played we did play a couple of missions mm-hmm. and they weren't that interesting were they no like they weren't <laughs> they didn't get they didn't like get the blood pumping or anything like that did they when I mean, it was no. just rescue some people from a hut you know yeah. it's like what we did and, and even was... if like even if the the writing was going to save it like in the story missions and stuff if you're playing it in co-op all your mates are talking over it no one's going to yeah, give a shit that's... no one's going to listen yeah um which again uh, yeah which brings me to the other reason that this is perhaps getting more snark than it deserves is it, the fact that it's by bioware and it's not what people want from bioware yeah. um which again it's not the game's fault it's not bioware's fault um but it's just yeah, it's just a bit like okay, so they might have written loads of really good dialogue. I'm never going to hear it. I'm just, I'm not. I don't even playing the game from the start and knowing what the story is. I think I'll find it difficult to get invested while I'm playing with other people. So yeah, am I, yeah. I going to end up just playing it solo? I don't. I don't it know. does seem a bit of a waste, like a waste of Bioware's skill set. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, 
but I mean, I don't know. Maybe they, like if the reviews come out and and they are just like, look, the story is fucking wicked. Then yeah, all right, I'll probably have a go. Um, I mean, I but, think it's probably safe to say the story probably will be good. I mean, they've got yeah, because the, the bit that you get record. in the demo is so you get like three story missions, and they basically I don't know, have you guys played through all three of them or nope or no. not. Um, so basically, there's this guy Matthias who you find this relic for him, and he it splits him into three. <laughs> um, so he's so they're like they're physical copies, but his like his mind is split into different like three different like thirds of himself. So like one's really timid, and then one's really aggressive, and then yeah, um, and and you know spoilers, he basically ends up staying that way. Um, and you and you do think like okay, like if I'd if this is part of like a grander story and they're just like, oh, by the way, this is how this character happened. He's one person split into three with different personalities and stuff. That's that's a cool Bioware character in any Bioware game, you know? Um, but it's just, yeah, like, as I say, there's, there's these cut scenes between the missions, which are which were fine. But then during the missions, there's all this chat going on and I'm just not paying any attention. And they're just like, oh, it's, you know, it's, oh, it's an artifact from the precursors and then this, this, was it the scars are the baddies or then there was other people, I don't know, the architects or something else. Just a lot of very, like, boring sci-fi jargon. But maybe once it's all in context, it's good. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it did, did not grab me. Yeah, I mean, just to go back, because I actually, I've got two things. One, I think mm-hmm. this is going to sell well initially. I think I'll probably have like a great first month, and then then who mm-hmm. knows where we are. But, yeah, but you think it's going to be a flop right out of the gate, don't you, uh, James? I do, yeah. I think, um, and I think, I mean, I don't like saying this, but I think maybe a couple of months down the line, we're going to have those stories where it's like there's only like 600 people playing oh, no, at the same no time. Way. That kind of thing. <laughs> this isn't going to be a lawbreaker <laughs> situation or... <laughs> no it won't be as bad as that probably but i i don't well, think it's it. gonna like, do is it gonna be a lawbreakers or is it gonna be like a sea of thieves where it's quietly like actually it could be a sea of yeah, thieves yeah, yeah. yeah. i, I, see I, that I reckon it'll yeah, yeah have, a, have really really good first month sales and like, oh actually that seems really well and the people who aren't mm. into it maybe like us and other people like i don't get it but you know maybe mm. ea have tapped in something for i don't know the mainstream or someone else i'd know i think it does really well sales wise and then yeah. Then I'd, I've no Matt, idea the main, where it might the mainstream go. have got Fortnite, Matt. They don't <laughs> care about this. Oh, yeah, I mean, that, that's, yeah, that's a very good point, of course. And also, back, back to the whole like EA need a hit thing. I, d- I know, like, I'll probably get shit for that. But like, okay, like, but Battlefield Five came out. I don't really know anyone talking about Battlefield Five <coughs> at all. That's a thing. Also, well, and they basically released it not really finished. That's the the gist I've got. Is that so? They said there was going to be Battle Royale mode. That's not in until March, like, March or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, and apparently there's not many maps and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, everyone I, mean, I know who was keen is now back yeah, yeah, on I mean, COD, I, 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 I know some, I know some you know, some really really massive Battlefield fans, and like even, even mm. they're not bothering with it. Uh, like, but Battlefront mm. 2 got hit, and uh, I guess with all like, the microtransaction stuff, I mean, like, mm-hmm. Titanfall 2 didn't sell massively well, so I still think they're sort of... They, they they do need a game which they can say, oh, smash our sales figures, and they well, haven't no, what, had that for a long time. What you're saying is you... You're saying they need like a, a critical and commercial hit, yeah, right? definitely, yeah, something. Yeah. They, they need something but to because the last few games though, were like they? that that bomb. No one's talking about that. That got killed in microtransaction stuff. They haven't really had a big success story that I can remember in recent in recent memory. So they need something like this. They put a lot of money into this. They're obviously hyping us up a lot. They've had multiple demos. They've they're, they're talking about like Twitch figures and this and up even just for this demo. So they need this to be massive. <clears throat> uh, I mean, isn't it yeah. isn't it funny that They'll probably make more off like the fucking Sims on your phone than they will. <laughs> yeah, <Definitely. laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which they is will. just yeah, um, yeah I, I I didn't hate this, but also I just haven't got any enthusiasm for it. So um, I mean, mm. I, I, are either of you two going to bother with the open demo next weekend? No, sure. I'd be interested to see if they've, made, if they've pa- if they've patched it. I'd be interested to see if like if they can just reduce some of that friction of the experience of like you know bugs and stuff maybe i'll enjoy it more uh, see, um, see the thing for me right even if it's said okay uh you know guaranteed no bugs maybe it's like you can boost you can fly forever it's got waypoints mm-hmm. fundamentally that one might be great and i guess i've you know i won't worry about bugs or crashes but fundamentally like the, the core gameplay just doesn't do anything for me and this that's is the thing isn't it like we yeah like because yeah Everyone's been saying, ah, oh, yeah, but, you know, Destiny took ages to find its feet. It's like, yeah, but everyone agreed, you know, when they first played Destiny, like, it felt great and it was yeah. good fun. It was the, you know, it was the structure around that. It was the bad boss design. Um, 
And, you know, that was what let it down. It was the structure of it more than anything. Whereas with this, it just feels a bit floaty. There's no, I don't know, there's no impact to anything. Um, like most enemies feel like they take a bit too long to kill. I don't, <laughs> like it's, I don't know, there was just yeah. no satisfaction in it for me. Yeah, um, yeah same here. So yeah, I'm I'm interested interested to see I just what, don't know where you're getting it. this idea from that there's like these loads and loads of people that are going to buy this, even though it's being kind of panned everywhere. I just don't understand. How do we think... panned everywhere, James? Well, the, I was going to uh, say, I, th- the, I thought the previews have been, not been like... entirely positive, has it? It's just been mostly okay. what we've said in the sense that it's like it's fine, but well, you I know. haven't actually read any previews, but I, I've I've heard people, but you know talk highly when they've come back and played at E3 and that sort of stuff but I haven't read any recent previews so if, you're, if, you're talking, if you're talking about this weekend's you know the the sort of um, response to the technical issues yeah sure it's not hasn't mm-hmm. exactly uh, shown itself to be great in that respect but I haven't read any other critical response to it other than that in all honesty okay. so who knows but I don't necessarily yeah. think I was just going to bomb just because we aren't massive fans of it I think you forget that there are loads of people out there the admittedly most of them are, as you said they're all playing Fortnite but uh, yeah yeah, I think it's really I mean, a bit early to write us off, frankly. Well, no, just think about this, though, right? How how has Black Ops done? Like, it's done pretty well, hasn't it? Like, yeah, um, it's done, yeah, amazing, yeah. But that that's done really well because it's like a recognised like name, and it's you know, and it's you know, we had like new modes like the Battle Royale stuff and everything. This is coming out with nothing behind it, is it? Like at all, really? Mm-hmm. So I I just can't see how it's going to do really really well, like straight out the gate considering the time of year it is, how much it's going to cost compared with the competition. I just can't see it. Uh, myself, to be but... fair, I think the, the release timing is about yeah, as I think it's good about as it as could as be. Get, really. It's like after Resi like 2, it's, admittedly it's before things like Division, Division 2, 2, and then like before yeah, yeah. the big the big crush in, uh, uh, you know, I guess like, well, it's only a week before the big crush in February, but still, it's uh, mm. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's a perfect time. I think it's a fine time of year to release it. Well, mm. We'll see. Yeah, we will see. We will. It's going to be interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely still way more excited for Division Two. Uh, yeah, I, I love the first yeah, one. Definitely. I only play like twenty or thirty hours. I barely play it at all, really. But I really enjoy what I played. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Enjoyed the demo we had at EGX. So yeah, see <clears throat> so that I'm I'm much more excited for. But who knows? Yeah. Who knows where we'd be? Maybe yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. 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 Um, I mean, just to, just to end it on a slightly positive note, <laughs> the flying flying is good fun when it's not massively limited um <laughs> and i do really like the designs of all the javelins and i really like that the, like the classes do feel really distinct um that's one thing like in destiny like it really doesn't matter if you have a diverse team or not like you'll you'll get by even if you've got three people using the same class whereas with this um it does feel like actually chopping and changing around and like you know if you're playing with like you know two or three mates like actually being like okay you you be this role i'll do this and did it like that will matter and that's cool um and especially the fact that you know you are free to just do that like it's not you know like you will just have like a, a whole suite of different um javelins you can get in it's not just like you pick one and then that's your class for the the rest of the game whereas you know with destiny if you want to play a different class you are starting from scratch and you are you know yeah. you have to level yeah, them up separately really good, um so that that freedom and that sort of you know those sort of team dynamics could be really cool well, um, but, but again like you get, like sorry, you said, okay, I want to be like a, a warlock or onto in Destiny. You basically mm. have to start again. I wonder yeah. if they do it a bit with okay, I want to change javelin, and now I've basically got to start again with this basic ass javelin. I wonder how it works. Because well, if, I think the from what I can tell, having messed around with the crafting system and stuff, basically as long as you've got like um, a load of materials ready to go, you can build like decent stuff. Oh, okay. Um, so even if, so yeah, so even as soon as you get a new javelin, um, you can already craft at least. I think it's like can already craft like higher level versions of the basic stuff so i think you'll still go out and find more interesting um items or blueprints or whatever um but you can yeah you can at least not be shit (laughs) um like you'll still by playing as a class you'll get more options within it um as time goes on but yeah i think you can like i don't think you'll just be like instantly underpowered if you try a new suit out yeah i I thought graphically i thought it looked really nice particularly in that's all the lush like uh forest environment i thought that looked really great really nice really nice during the day at night time i felt it was a bit muddy like it was just i don't know a bit indistinct nothing yeah really... i mean a lot of the maps or uh, you know the areas we've been they had like, a lot tons of verticality but because yeah. i knew i had like limited boost i was like well am i really gonna try and boost up there and just fall down halfway yeah but like it's the it's cool to see that in the level at least yeah like the verticality like looks great 
and you know but it doesn't really feed like it doesn't feed into the combat particularly like yeah no. oh yeah you can hover while you shoot enemies but why on earth would you because you're just a sitting duck like everyone can just blast the shit out of you so i don't really know what the thinking is behind that again maybe that's something i've not quite understood about the combat um and yeah and like you say the, the boost is so limited it's not like you i don't know like if you want to like if there's an exit from the bit of the map you're in and it's up a cliff like you can't just be like oh like that's over there and i'm gonna fly over there you'd be like no i'm gonna have to go there on foot first and then jump off and boost because otherwise i'm just gonna overheat by the time i get there do you know what i mean that sort of yeah yeah i don't know that sort of management of it is maybe a bit too onerous i don't know so yeah anthem and that's out anthem. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> 50 quid um is anyone still doing it for like 35 quid i saw a few of those yeah i mean the shot two were last i checked I mean, is okay. that a concern that some, all the shops are saying for 32 quid rather than full price? Well, I mean, again, Don't yeah. Don't worry, it'd be 20 quid after them? a couple of months. <laughs> well, again, is that, is, that, is that genuine worry or is that just them being like, look, we know this is a, a big ask. Um, we know you've already got games like this that you play a lot. So maybe they just accept that that is part of the cost of getting people on board and then in a year's time you can pump them full of DLC. But... Mm. Who knows? But yeah, I think it says everything that during our stream, James downloaded Destiny 2 <laughs> during the stream. <laughs> Didn't even wait until after it. It's like, couldn't wait, couldn't wait. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Started playing that again, actually, and then got oh, yeah. utterly confused as to what I need to do because <laughs> I've, I've forgotten where I was and, you know, the whole thing, there's so many things to do. Can you not yeah. just, if you, oh, so you haven't bought Forsaken yet, right? No, not yet, no. Okay, well, when you when you buy Forsaken, you will get an item that lets you basically just skip all the base Destiny 2 stuff and go straight on to Forsaken. Oh, okay. So may, maybe just do that. Yeah, and just spend another 20 quid. The I mean, the, the Destiny 2 campaign's great. Um, the two DLC packs in year one were fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, if you want to catch up, yeah, you can just do that. And Did just you remember single Forsaken, player so. in Destiny 2, James? Yeah, I finished it. It was yeah, I was great. Say, yeah, I thought, I thought you did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Right, okay. Um, yeah, it's good. Yeah, um, decent game. Right, what, what have we been playing? James, you got nothing else apart from Anthem, is that right? <laughs> I've got virtually nothing else. I mean, I, I played Red Dead, uh, which I'm still loving, and that's about it, really. Okay. There's well, nothing what, else. What chapter are you in now? I'm still in chapter four. And uh, okay, I've, been cool. mostly ex- I've been mostly exploring. It's, um, yeah, there's, especially yeah. the Stranger mission, some of that stuff is very funny and also touching in places and yeah just some of really the best well bits observed. the stranger missions yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the, the ones that they're much less likely to be like go to this waypoint and then follow someone around and kill the people they tell you to and yeah <laughs> like the stranger missions tend to be a bit more diverse yeah did you sean did you do the one mm-hmm. with the slaves in the in the shop yes i did because that that was great that one that was really yeah. interesting i thought yeah 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 yeah, yeah really good um, Matt, do you want to do yours? Uh, yeah, so I played uh, a bunch of things. So obviously, as well as Anthem, um, I played uh, Bloodborne again on Sunday. Mm-hmm. Still loving that. Killed the first boss. Was about a, well, I was one hit away from killing Father Gaskell, which is the second boss. I nearly had a fucking heart attack. That. <laughs> you and me I both. Was... Sure. I basically, <laughs> forgot to start. I forgot to breathe. Basically, I'd... yeah. Um... Was it because it was the fact that you got those two consecutive parries off as well. Oh, and yeah. it's, oh fuck me! And he's done. Gave, he's gonna do it. He's given the confidence. <laughs> I was like, I'm gonna do it. And then I just I was low on health and I was freaking yeah. out. But uh, yeah, yeah. I re- I rewatched that today, and it's it's still as breathless rewatching it. I mean, it must be horrific <laughs> to watch, let alone it's stressful enough to play. But yeah, I'm absolutely loving that yeah. game. Uh, mm-hmm. I just I've only obviously only done two streams, they're both available to watch on our YouTube channel. But yeah, I'm just loving the game so far. Uh it's brilliant. So I can't wait to get back to that uh, on Sunday. Um cool. I also uh, played two other games. I played Life is Strange Two, Episode Two. Now you two haven't oh, played yeah. this yet, right? No, not yet. Yeah, I'm it, keen. But not played it. Yeah. Yeah. Um well I guess I won't say too much. I mean, um I mean I saw that the screenshots on the PSN store gave a fucking lot away. Um, I was, oh, <laughs> I was like, oh right, so that's what happens in this episode then. Um, I mean, obviously, I assume there's a lot more to it, but yeah, I'm I'm aware of who you meet in this episode. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's a cool episode in that it um, links to other things you may have um, or other mm-hmm. characters you've you've seen. I'll say that much, yeah. unless you go to the PlayStation yeah. Store and see all the spoilers for you. <laughs> um, it was about three and a half or so hours, so it's another quite long one. So again, it, my memory okay. was basically that. 
previously episode one of, of each series is quite a long one and after that they go to like two hours each but again this is quite a long one so may- maybe that isn't the case and i've just remembered it incorrectly i was gonna say i yeah i thought series one they were basically sort of two three hours each but mm. yeah yeah because the first yeah. one was like three and a half this is yeah, this is about, about maybe it's slightly less than three and a half actually in the end by the time i got through okay. it but yeah so um I played it. I, I saw well, the first time I played it for about an hour and a half. And after that hour and a half, I, I asked you guys if you were going to get it played before, for this week. And you said no. And that first 90 minutes was pretty uninspiring to the point where I'm like, oh, well, I might just leave it a week until Sean yeah. and James have played it. But because um, mm-hmm. nothing really happened for me. Um, right. I just thought, well, this is a bit a bit dull, a bit a bit filler right now. Uh, then um, I had a couple of hours to myself on the Saturday morning, so I thought, okay, I might, I might as well get it done now. And after that, it definitely improved. I will say overall, I'm I'm disappointed with the episode, um, okay. especially after the, the you know how good the first episode was. Yeah, there, there was so much to the first episode. I guess there often is in any sort of series. You know, you could establish new characters, what story is going to be, this and the other. Um, mm. This had very little in that respect. Uh, it definitely. Uh, gradually gets better. I just think it's got an incredibly slow, like first hour and a half or so. But it does, mm-hmm. it does improve, and there are some cool moments. And the ending, I thought, was really good. And I cannot mm-hmm. wait to discuss what the lead up to the ending and the ending itself when we do our spoiler cast because I think there's going to be a lot of discussion about that. But yeah, overall, I, I, I wasn't like, I mean, nothing like I was in episode one. I was like, this is amazing. I just, it had everything. The first episode, this, I felt like it's and loads of filler they could have made it half the length and made it much more impactful but um see i wish i didn't know all this going well, in that's, that's the thing right? i spoke it's... to dave today he's like have you finished it yet well he's like, he asked if i played it i said i finished it and he, dave's absolutely loving it so maybe i was just in a weird mood i don't know i mean i think all my points still stand i believe in them but yeah dave dave's absolutely loving this so uh, maybe that'll change who knows he's about two or well, two or so hours in um <laughs> But yeah, I wasn't blown away by it, which is a bit of a disappointment. Okay. But I'm, I'm glad I played it, obviously, and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it um, when we do a spoiler cast for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, but I got that, um, and I played cool. it. And also, I played and finished PQ Niku, which is a game. Actually, I think this was announced at Nintendo's Indie Showcase. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it is a uh, it's a game. It's published by uh, Devolver, and it's it's made by a game called Se- uh, by a Dev called Sector Dub, and it's. Basically, um, it's a it's a two D puzzle platformer with uh, almost like children's TV style graphics, like incredibly basic, um, untextured two D shapes, basically coloured like mm. uh, red red circles, blue uh, blue squares, that sort of stuff. And mm. um, I saw it and it looked fine, but then the Eurogamer uh, review in like the opening paragraph, it mentioned the series "Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared," which is oh, yeah. an amazing. Um, surreal uh sort of, uh, ab- uh, absurd youtube series where it looks exactly like a child a children's tv show but actually all the stuff i talked about and the way it's laid out and the songs and all sorts it's incredibly dark <laughs> and and strange and weird um if anyone hasn't seen don't hug me i'm scared go on youtube and watch it, it is crazy i found that after going through the whole like you know i'm you know poppy the uh the singer. Oh, yeah. yeah. I like oh, went through. Right. I think I, I think <laughs> you were sort of you were watching that stuff as well, Bernie James, and I was getting in going down that rabbit hole on YouTube. Yeah, I, s- I saw a bit of it. Yeah, yeah. So was, I watched loads yeah. of like Poppy stuff and other channels for it, and like <laughs> uh, uh, t- Titanic Sinclair, which is another channel related to him. Anyway, it also links. Don't hug me. I'm scared. Amazing. Um, but this this is similar. So uh, the story of Piku Niku, uh, basically, <clears throat> you're in this. Um, strange, playful world, and the story is basically that there's these machines going around the landscape picking up junk, and they drop money toward the residents of this of this world. And everyone's like, "Oh, isn't it amazing? We just get rid of our junk, and we get you know, get some money. It's the best thing ever." Everyone's really happy about that. Uh, but then you 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 find out that there's actually, there's actually an, another side to this. Um, I'm not gonna say anything more than that. But there's another side to it. So it's not just it's not quite as happy go lucky. Um, mm-hmm. It's not quite as happy go lucky. Um, uh, uh, as you think, but but the game itself is really really funny. It's it drops like um, it's got a lot of self referential sort of meta humor, but it, mm-hmm. uh, all the gags they drop are, are really really well uh, 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 really well written. I, I found myself laughing out loud loads. It's got lo- lots of quite absurd conversations and humor, and even like side missions. You would like meet other characters in this town, um, and they would 
uh, you're going to the house and maybe you'll knock over a plant pot because this game also is it's it's all about the physics like pretty much everything you can like move or kick mm-hmm. or knock over or jump on and every time you knock into another like person in this town they will give you like a funny little line that 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 you know that, that, that makes you laugh or you'll knock over something in a house and they'll say why did you do that you idiot i was cleaning my house it's like it's really like st- strange but really funny lines that <laughs> when you look at the game doesn't look like it would ever deliver that, that sort of humor um, mm-hmm. th- th- there's one guy uh, I can't remember this, guy, this guy's name but you're going to his little house and he's dressed up in like sports gear and he's got all this, his, these these posters around the house uh, for this new sport I wrote it down uh, bollocks oh yeah um, it's called bass kick and it's basically basketball <laughs> but instead of like throwing the ball you kick it and he's like I'm the best bass kick player in the world and then you suddenly go into like a one on one like game of bass kick with him and uh, <laughs> even that's really funny because it's just you versus this other player the only you can jump or kick basically and there's like um, a, a, a basketball hoop at each end of this little court you see on the screen and it, that's just funny because there's loads of weird physics and he's kicking you you're kicking him if it like it could be one of those great local multiplayer games that you spend hours with your mates playing um and then yeah like, and then and then you can beat him and he's like, oh mate or not the best in the world and, and it's just it's just <coughs> lo- 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 loads of really strange humor you meet loads of mm. um random people in this town and they'll give you a strange little um uh like uh a, a, a sub a side mission and that sort of stuff uh throughout throughout the game really um there's a few puzzles that they're not too difficult the platform isn't too difficult either um but then there's these like dungeons and even though it's not hard at all you'll meet this little snake as you go around a dungeon saying if this game's too hard for you don't worry about it you, you can leave now you can leave if it's too hard for you so i'm not sure if that's trying to like talk to like the younger audience if they're playing this because yeah. maybe they'll find it challenging i mean i it wasn't challenging at all um uh, so i don't know but um yeah, I, I thought it was a really excellent game. It's only like three to f- well, three to five hours. I think is the official length of time. I think it, it took me like two evenings. So yeah, three and a half, four hours. Uh, yeah, humor is great. Uh, it's got a nice little story. It's really like charming. Uh, it's only like eleven pound sixty nine or something on on the eShop, like a random mm-hmm. price. But yeah, I'd recommend it. Uh, it's actually free currently if you got Twitch Prime. Uh, it's oh shit! This, oh no, no, I think it's yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it's uh, this this month's Twitch Prime games. I'm not sure when those end, but you mm. should go to Twitch Prime now and get it because it's free on PC to download through there. Yeah, it's like eleven pounds something on Twitch. Um, there's also Fair a co-op mode. What what? I reckon it'd be great as co-op. What did you play? What did you play it on? I played on Switch. Oh, yeah, okay. I played on Switch. Um, I, I was playing it uh, just in the lounge, and even LED came up and wanted to see it, and then she had to go, so, and she just, she barely plays games, oh, nice. so, and she found it easy enough. But there is a co-op mm-hmm. mode, which I reckon would be really funny with a maid, but also would probably, probably work really, really well with, you know, if, you, if, you've got, if you've got a child who wants to play it. So I reckon co-op yeah. would be brilliant. There's, like, little puzzles and, and all sorts of stuff there. But, yeah, um, cool. I thought it was an excellent little game. Yeah, 11 pounds something, three to five hours, and it's... Uh, it's a bit of a laugh as well. I was really impressed. Nice one. Yeah, that, that's, this is, that's uh, this published. This is published by Devolver. Yeah, yeah, published by Devolver. Yeah, Devolver are absolutely killing it on Switch at the moment. If you ask me, <laughs> I, I, I assume like a deal has been done somewhere because I feel like everything Devolver puts out at the moment is Switch and PC, and that's it. Um, yeah. And there's just yeah, it's been tons of good stuff, reasonably priced. Um, yeah, it's been it's not it's been well, nice. I guess they, I guess um, they, they've just got the workflow down, like you know, to, to easily port yeah. the, these games they're making for PC. Yeah, you know, and uh, yeah, I guess yeah, so. But yeah. I, I haven't played a bad one of their games recently. It's to, and this is another surprise. Mm-hmm. I didn't, I didn't know about this beforehand. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I, I didn't actually even cause I, I didn't actually watch the indie uh, showcase at that point. But when mm-hmm. I saw just that title for of the Eurogamer review mentioning, "Don't hug me, I'm scared. I'm, I'm there. I've got." I've got to see this game, and I'm glad I did. Yeah, Piku Niku, cool. get involved. I nice. have played. Um, oh right, yeah. So you know, I was, I was moaning on the show about there not being any move controllers knocking around. Yes. Um, shout out to uh, Rob Shack on Twitter, uh, Rob McElroy, who's just fucking sent me some. Has he? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, God bless him. He was like. He's like, honestly, mate, they're not doing anything. And I was like, I know, but you could, you could probably sell them, mate. Was- <laughs> <laughs> you could be a millionaire if you sold them, Rob. Um, but yeah, he's very kindly sent me a couple of move controllers, um, which is amazing. So thank you very much, Rob. Um, it's one of those things where it's like, look, I would, I would buy them, but literally no one's <laughs> it's selling them. So they, so they are, they are literally priceless. <laughs> so yeah, massively chuffed with that. Um, 
So I've played, uh, knowing that it was going to be like a relatively short experience that I would probably get quite a lot out of, I played Accounting Plus, um, oh, yeah. which James talked about the other week. Um, it's weird, like, so <laughs> I, because I, I got a, a weird, incorrect ending, um, but as far as I can tell, there's no quick way to just go back. Like, it basically just starts the game again, and I was like, oh. No, there's... There's um, a cassette. There's a thing where you can just like select and go to missions. Oh, is that okay? All right, I probably yeah. will do that then. Because yeah, basically, I, I realized that I made like an awkward choice very late on, and it gave me a very surreal ending that didn't really make any sense. Um, mm-hmm. But and it was a little bit disturbing as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the considering I only paid about three pound fifty for it because it was on sale. Um, just the laughs I got out of it. Um, just yeah absolutely spot on um i haven't laughed at a game like this in ages i don't think um it's the voices isn't it yeah it's the voices were cracking me up in the yeah because like i was i was chuckling like you know when you first arrive at your your accounting job and they're like shouting at you down the phone and stuff and that was pretty good and then when you first go to the the tree world and you just get obscenities hurled at you (laughs) and and the fucking the the street gang um I mean, yeah. I think like, they're cool. Yeah, and then you stuff. pick up a brick and they just start absolutely going mental. Um, <laughs> I just, yeah, I, mean, I don't want to say more than that because it, yeah, it's just, it's fucking hilarious. Um, properly enjoyed it. And just, yeah, I, like I can't believe there aren't more games like this um, yeah. because, yeah, it was just great. And like I say, for, Look, how for similar three... is this to Job Simulator? Because having not seen this, or this, it sounds like it's that sort of thing or is it more in depth? Possibly possibly this is like the joke is you don't do any accounting there's no oh man um, i forget you, it you, yeah <laughs> like you basically well it reminds me more of i don't know if you remember ages ago i talked about virtual virtual reality oh yeah i remember um, that i remember you talking about yeah that. which was like it's a vr game where the, the the hook is that you're picking up and taking off like different vr headsets within the game and transporting yourself to different places so this this does a similar thing um so i'd be interested to see which came first because they, they are very similar um but it's a good idea, so whatever. Um, and, they, they, you know, it's done really differently here. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah, like James says, the voice acting is absolutely superb because um, I know they've got one of the guys from Rick and Morty, which I'm not a huge fan of, but, um, yeah, it, it works here. Um, the fucking, the, the skeleton xylophone. Yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I just, yeah, if you've got, uh psvr or i think it's on oculus as well um yeah it's like for what it costs it's such good fun like it, like it gets a bit dark later on um so like i spent the first half being like oh my god i need to make my wife play this i think she'll really enjoy it and then later on i was like oh no she'll probably find this a bit much oh, really? <laughs> yeah but <laughs> I, had, I had the same i had the same thoughts yeah. yeah i was gonna get Chen to have a try like the stuff at the beginning because it's yeah. like yeah the stuff at the beginning is so well like observed and everything, yeah. but yeah, yeah it sure. does start to go. That that's why about maybe two thirds of the way through, I started to feel a bit kind of like uh, I'm, I'm not not loving this so much. Yeah, now. yeah, but definitely, then... it does sort of lose its way. I think it would have been better as just like a, a comedy throughout, um, mm-hmm. but then it all gets a bit surreal and yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, really enjoyed it, and I'm looking forward obviously to playing more things that involve the move controls. Yeah, sure. Now so, you've got um, that. Please play Super Hot VR. Yes. Yeah, yes. that's excellent. We'll do. Yeah. We're looking forward and, to and that. Oh, yeah, that. I also... Uh, oh, yeah, shit. Um, yeah, I also... I forgot to put it on the um, show notes, but I also played a bit of um, Hollow Ball, which, like, on paper is, like, not interesting. It's, like, it's tennis, but it's in, like, a... You know, it's all sort of neon, sort of Tron-style setting, and you're just whacking a ball back at, a, you know, a paddle that's moving around on the other side. But it's just so well done. Like, it's just properly enjoyable just like gently smacking this ball back and like the feedback you get and everything and the yeah it, it's yeah really nice and again that only cost me a few quid in the sale so really, really glad okay. I got that. I, I, that sounds mm. like is this, hang on, is this yeah. this is vr as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah. what's um, it called uh hollow i think it's hollow ball okay let's have made that up um yeah so that's that's pretty good um but yeah on the stream last week or i guess two streams ago by the time you hear this uh i played desert child Yes, you did. Um, yeah, this is really interesting. Is... I, I, in my head, I thought it's a totally different game because I got yeah. so confused with another game. Mostly, like, told a text message where you're talking about your. It's in like a Syrian refugee camp. <laughs> this is not that game. <laughs> no, this that, that be, is called. Like, that I, game no, is called. What that game is because that's that game looks great, but uh, yeah. that's called Bury Me, My Love. Yeah, oh, that's this on, is, yeah, um, yeah. So, Desert Child. This is um, 
very heavily influenced by, I mean, I guess anime in general, but like really specifically Cowboy Bebop. But then it's got sort of these sort of really strange like MS DOS visuals, like this sort of really limited color palette. Um, and basically, the, the actual like game bit is just this like 2D side on um, like hover bike races where you sort of guide your, you know, you go up and down and you boost and you shoot and then you run out of ammo. You have to like boost up to this little ammo truck to restock. And then, and basically, there's like these TVs dotted around. And by shooting the TVs, um, that like increases your um, maximum speed. Um, then some of the TVs have guns on them or they drop mines or whatever. And, you know, and that's something you have to navigate as well as like obstacles flying at you. Um, and like, <laughs> so what I played on the stream was was great. So I did I did like what about an hour and a half something like that. Yeah, about that. Yeah, and um, yeah, and uh, you know, and you get into like basically you start off on Earth and it's like you just sort of do these races and they're they're fine, and then you get to Mars and then there's like more like you know there's a bit more variation to the jobs you can do. There's so the like the races are still there, but then there's like there's herding kangaroos and there's going like doing some bounty hunts and you know you have to actually like, chase someone down and shoot them um and then there's yeah there's there's other stuff um and you, you know you start getting into like you get you can find all these little upgrade modules for your bike which you then have to sort of um you know there's this this sort of it's not a, a puzzle but you've got to figure out how to fit these modules into this like grid on your your bike and then you have to be able to connect them all with power cells and and again you sort of like this is pretty cool like i hope you know everyone in the chat was saying oh you know I presume you get like a bigger bike later on that can fit more mods in because i was only able to fit sort of two or three in it you know at the, at the same time um and then when i left the stream so i was saving up money to enter this grand prix um and then everyone's thinking like, right, cool. So I guess you do that. And then there's like another chapter where it opens up a bit more and that'll be really interesting. And, you know, like when I sort of ended the stream, everyone was saying like, oh yeah, like, you know, stream this again in like a month or something and just show us like, you know, where, how it sort of progresses. It doesn't. Um, oh. <laughs> you, d- you, d- you do the Grand Prix and that's the end of the game. <laughs> um, so I must have played maybe another hour. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And that was that. Just, um, like, so how how long is it in total then? It's like, it must have been about two and a half hours. I think I must have done it in. Wow. Well, um, okay. And it's like you know, and you know, normally I'm a big fan of games that don't take a huge amount of time. Um, but I was in like it was a bit grindy. Like it could have done with like maybe more um, sort of mission types. Um, like you know, there were like bits of it where I was just basically doing the same thing over and over but I was in cuz uh, you know I like the soundtrack's amazing yeah like game oh, has a really good sense of so humor good. yeah um like I was so into the the general tone of it like it was funny um that I was like Do you know what yeah I'm, I'm really keen to see where this goes and then to find out that it just doesn't was really disappointing <laughs> um so there was there was no relief in it being as short as it was like I was really up for playing loads more of it and then the end is just so abrupt. Yeah, and it then really it just... felt like it was just a start, and the complexity was really ramp up. And yeah, yeah, like there was so much potential there. I mean, if they if they do a sequel, I'll probably be into it. I just hope it's a little bit longer. Um, yeah, it was a strange game. Like a, I didn't hate it. Like I really enjoyed those two and a half hours, but yeah, just wasn't ready for it to end at all. Yeah, because at first um, it was a bit like, what is even the loop of this game? It all seemed a bit disparate, yeah. a bit weird. And then you're on bikes, and you're upgrading, but then. After like half an hour or half an hour, 40 minutes, it's like, okay, like everyone watching the stream is like, okay, we get this now. And it was entertaining. Yeah, to go so from found, the... a, found a rhythm with it. Yeah. And then and then it finished. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the music is fantastic. Like, yeah, we're like, really just good, yeah. do the pizza one again because the pizza song was so yeah. good. And, <laughs> yeah, like people actually are requesting you to yeah. play the same sections because the songs are really, really cool and different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, incredibly mixed feelings, um, but ultimately disappointed, I guess. Um, like I can't really recommend it. Um, but yeah, pro- I don't know. Probably just watch the stream archive. And yeah, enjoy that the and then leave it. Um, but yeah, that's it from me. What? What? what uh, should we? What? What did you play last night? Tech? Oh, uh, so last night, tomorrow night, stroke last night. Um, but uh, played. Uh, Pass Part Two: The Starving Artist, which is a game where you have to like just draw things um, really badly, and then you put like basically just like an artist on with like a little like market stall, and you just put your paintings out, and people come along and judge them. Um, so I'm 
guessing basically the whole stream is just going to be a countdown to how long does it take for me to run out of ideas and <laughs> just start drawing arses and willies and then you said a trailer um, i think i think you must, you must send me a trailer like a, while, a couple oh, yeah, of weeks yeah. ago and it was like okay mm-hmm. this could be fantastic on on the stream yeah. so yeah i'm very excited uh to watch hang the on, thing that happened who, last night who, or tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> who who judges them sean is this like who who does the judging? They're just this little AI characters who come along and like. Oh, okay. So yeah, I don't, I don't like know. Not like an online sort of thing. No, like sadly people. not. No, um, I don't know what sort of. There's definitely a consistency to it because you'll do a painting and like everyone will think it's shit. Um, so there must be a way to to game it somehow. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm going to be interested. I've like I've only played a tiny bit of it, so yeah, I'm going to try and stick with the thing of like not really playing the games before the stream. So we'll see. But yeah, I found my oh, I've got like... my little um, stylus for my phone that I'm going to use so be able to draw really well with it it's going to be oh, great yeah, so, so it's a phone game yeah well it's on um, it's on the Switch as well and I think PC um, but I just thought it'd be funnier to be, like, be able to like actually sort of draw with my like with a pen so we'll see how that pans out <laughs> so yeah awesome. that's me that good emails yeah Okay. So, so if you want to email us, like us. Yeah, that's you, James. <laughs> if you want to email us, it's uh, podcast at <coughs> uh, com. Uh, Martin de Goose uh, has, or oh, de Grusa, whatever, has um, emailed us. Sorry. Um, it's been great hearing Sean each week uh, talk about his progression on Destiny 2. It's been fairly steady, much like myself, and as a parent, Destiny 2 has become one of those comfy games I can pick up and play when I get some spare time. I'm sure there are many others out there uh, like me who do the same. So I just wanted to say that our very own Discord group has been progressing as well, and last week we completed the last wish, uh, Forsaken Raid. It was absolutely brilliant fun. Very heavy on the mechanics, requires some good teamwork, but we were all very relaxed about getting through it, so the lack of pressure meant it was really enjoyable. Two people also got the 1,000 voices exotic at the end. Not me, though, sadly. This was with a bunch of regulars from the Discord, and we have been raiding every week on a Monday at 8pm. So, could you make everyone aware of the Discord and the group? If there are others who listen who want to join in, then come by and say hi to me, uh, Degoose, and I can try and get them involved with the raids. We also do Iron Banner when it's on, and any other PvE uh, content. Sean, you're obviously also welcome to jump in. Also, finally, big thanks to Glacier Rays on Discord, who was our Sherpa and tour guide through the raid. He has amazing patience with our constant fails. And yeah, that was Degoose. I mean, he says I'm welcome to jump in, but they they know when we record this podcast. I feel like that's... <laughs> been done on know. purpose Monday at 8pm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but no it's because I had obviously I do like keep an eye on the, um, the the Destiny 2 room in the Discord and it's really nice seeing like people who um, yeah like obviously didn't have anyone to play with and they've all sort of banded together and that's been really cool to see and yeah no I, I yeah but I'd be up for trying to do a raid at some point um, it's just finding the fucking time I'd be interested to know how long it took them because um, I know when the Last Wish raid first went up, it was a fucking nightmare. Yeah, it was like 18 <laughs> hours or something, wasn't it? Yeah, something ridiculous like that. But obviously, another expansion has come out since, so you can you can go into the Last Wish raid like overpowered, I guess, which will help. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's been really nice to see. So yeah, I would be keen on getting involved at some yeah. point. And if anyone's listening and they want to join Discord, you can go to bit dot lee slash tcgs discord or there's like a, a link pinned to the top of our twitter profile so just go there yeah what's next james okay mike uh he says first of all i love the first two shows even post dave the magic is still there you three are just as funny insightful and engaging as you ever were and if i might I might make one little format suggestion at the end of each show sean could give a little thought for the week uh, anything in gaming or podcasting that struck him or made him think. The entire point being so you can call the section the bell end. <laughs> tempted, tempted, Stop James, uh, uh, Sean. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, after a slightly rough uh, start to the week, I decided to treat myself and I picked up a Nintendo Switch. I've got to say I'm utterly loving it. Mario Odyssey is glorious, Breath of the Wild is incredible, and I might have shed a single manly tear at just how beautiful Octopath Traveler is in motion. But I know, I know one of the big selling points of the Switch is the breadth of indie titles on the eShop. However, I found this found that discovery on the shop is less than ideal. So would you? what would you suggest are some standout indie titles that are must-buys for the system? That's a very good question. I'm just... I'm picking up my switch now i mean so. i love the banner saga <laughs> yeah, tons of stuff the banner saga i play one and two the third one's out god yeah but those, those are excellent games um so i mean look. i wasn't wild about it but everyone loves dead cells that's a big one yeah. i mean celeste, celeste Undertale. yeah 
Um, Piper Light Drifter, if Hollow you haven't Knight. played that, Hollow Knight. Um, yeah. All absolute bangers. Iconoclasts is really good. I really uh, enjoyed so. uh, Mark of the Ninja, the remaster from the 360. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's excellent yeah. if you haven't played the original version. Yeah. Uh, th- also, Go, there's all the stuff like Night in the Woods. Yeah. Uh, Oxen yeah, 3, I've got Axiom Verge. Axiom Verge is great. Yep. Uh, Detention, I, I really like that oh, yeah. uh, from before. The Shantae games, mm-hmm. I mean, I've, I've found those, <laughs> yep. obviously. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go. I'm just sort of reading off my list. Yeah. Uh, Blossom Tales, The Sleeping King. That was good. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was, you, saying, yeah. you should try that. Yeah. That, was, that was fun. Uh, Thumper, if you haven't played so... that and you like your rhythm games, that's pretty incredible. Um, Stardew Valley. Two. Yeah, I mean, is this enough, do you think? Right. It... <laughs> no, we, we keep there's going. more. I mean, I'm just oh, looking yeah, I'm, at I'm sure there's games more. Of <laughs> Piki Niku, yeah. I think in, is Inside Out. I think that's on, that's on Twitch. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. God, yeah, it is. Yeah. Oh, really and Monster that. Boy recently. Yeah. Uh, or if you if you want to like just get a taste of it, then try the Dragon Trap first because that's that's cheaper and uh, yeah, also very good. Yeah. Didn't you yeah. like that? Was it Gora Gora? Sean, is that? Oh, uh, Gora Goa. Yeah. Gora. I mean, that's if you've got a smartphone or a tablet, you're probably better off playing it on that. Um, but yeah, I, I did really love that. I was just having a quick look to see if anything's on sale. I mean, I, I haven't don't played it, anything... but Undertale's on Switch. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, and is a, but yeah, a you're classic, right. the store or so I'm told. Is an absolute <laughs> joke, as are all digital storefronts. They're all terrible. It's funny, isn't it? Because you remember, <laughs> like, when the Switch first came out, everyone's like, oh my God, this is amazing. Because, like, every indie game that goes up is doing way better than it ever would on Steam just because of discoverability. And then now, now that the Switch is popular, it's suffering from the exact same thing. I mean, maybe not to the same extent. Like, there's like thousands of games on Steam every minute. Um, but, um, yeah, there is a lot of stuff that kind of gets lost, though, isn't there? Like, yeah. there's, there's loads of stuff that I think I'd be interested. Like you just mentioned iconoclasts, mm-hmm. and like I, that would be perfect I'm for me. Pretty but sure I, I completely that. forgot. Yeah. yeah, I completely forgot it existed. You know, because yeah. it's, like, it's. I need to put it in like the like the wish list or whatever. I think it was so on. Can, wasn't it on it. PS Plus? A month or two ago. Was it? Yeah. So you might already have it. In that case, I probably still have it. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, you will really like that. I'm sure. Um. Yeah. Good. Good. Bloody console. But out of for all these things, like the indies. Uh, yeah. The eShop and other things, it's never saying, oh, I'll just browse to see what's out because it's so terrible. Yeah. Just You get all your recommendations of, of other podcasts, of Twitter, Reddit, you know. It's... Yeah, because well, games seem to go up pretty sporadically, but then for some reason Thursday always seems to get a, a glut of them. So like, I tend to just check the store every Thursday morning, see if anything's up, but... Yeah. yeah, I mean, I usually just look at the current offers yeah. just to see if there's yeah. anything interesting thing there. Because <laughs> often, when things first come out, they often discount them. You know, like yeah, you know, a little bit, little a bit thing, of. Yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, I think that's okay. Probably enough to be getting on with, isn't it? Thomas McInnes says, uh, I've been loving the recent streams. Not only are they entertaining, but thought-provoking too. I've realised that I now prefer watching people playing games to actually playing them than myself. It's possible an age thing. I'm only 18 months away from the big 4-0 shudder and therefore almost dead the ravages of time are dulling my reactions as my fingers slowly turn to dust my free time is consumed by boring adult things when i do get a window to play something i often can't be bothered especially if there is a massive patch or update to download first so watching your streams is a godsend a way of keeping engaged with games for those moments where i lack the time or inclination i'll keep on playing games forever of course and still make day one purchases but my relationship with them is definitely evolving Increasingly, it's more about collecting games, reading about them, listening to people talk about them, and watching others play them. Is this something you can identify with? As time poor dads, uh, how have your gaming habits evolved to fit your lives? I mean, I don't know if it's exclusively an age thing, um, because obviously everyone watches streams these days. It's not... um... Definitely not. Definitely not just older people. You know, me, me neither. Generally, but <laughs> but do you know what I mean? It's not like it's not just you know time poor people who are doing it. It's you know, like it's kids as yeah. well. Um, so I mean, he's definitely not alone. But yeah, I don't think it's it's totally an age thing. Um, it can be obviously like it's a lot cheaper to just watch people play games than actually buy the fucking things as well. So that's definitely a factor. Mm-hmm. Um. In terms of habits changing as I get older, I think it's just being a bit more realistic about the types of games I'm going to have time for. Like something like Red Dead 2 was special because I knew that was going to be such a big deal, but like I can't do 60, 70 hour games anymore. Um, it's just not feasible. I mean, I can, but like that'll be all I play for weeks, you know. Um, so yeah, sort of the general shift towards shorter, more focused things has been quite mm-hmm. good for me. Um, I don't know if it's the same for you guys. Yeah, it's it's become. I mean, there's 
there are things like Red Dead that I you know really want to get through. I mean, actually, I mean, I just rebought a game which is going to be an epic that's going to take me ages as well anyway. <laughs> but it's on Switch, so I kind of feel like that I, it's more likely that I'm actually going to play it yeah. because I play that. I mean, I probably play the Switch more than any other machine I've got because mm. purely because of like you can play it anywhere and all you know that that kind of stuff. What, yeah. what game have I mean, you I re-bought? re-bought? It was uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. I've I'm oh, wow, trying okay. that again, and that's like another like that's massive a bigger epic. Nut. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would take a while. But, um, I mean, I'm enjoying it a lot more this time around. I mean, it is one of those things... I mean, I've found with that game, there's so many games now where I have to be in the right mood for different stuff. Yeah. And otherwise, I just can't click with it. Like, that's why when I first started playing Red Dead, when it first came out, I wasn't really in the right like sort of frame of mind for it, really. And then now I feel I am. It's, yeah. You know, it, and that's the thing. That's what's sometimes annoying with like with releases and everything is that, you know, you, you buy stuff and you think, yeah, I need to get in on this because, you know, everyone's playing this or whatever. I just don't feel like it though. You know, it's just, I don't feel in the mood for this this type of game at the it's moment. A, I feel it like um, it's a lot more like music in that, yeah, there'll be certain things you feel like playing over others it's not just like you know back in the yeah, day you definitely. just played whatever you were currently playing or when you're a bit younger you know one of the four games that you owned um yeah. whereas now it's like yeah you have this massive selection and it's like yeah you you'll you will be in a mood to play a specific thing now and it's great in a way that because mm-hmm. it, it's just i mean that shows the like how things have evolved yeah. you know to the point where there is so much choice yeah for sure where you can be like completely selective and i think it's. I think part of this is sort of learning to sort of just feel like it, you don't need to play everything, like you really don't, and mm-hmm. just choose what you want. Yeah, really, that is going to interest you. Mm. You don't have to play everything, and then the stuff you don't want to play, you can just watch. Uh, I don't mean the endings on YouTube before the tweets start coming in. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, well, I don't. I, you know, I never play Dota, but I, I watch wherever esports and stuff. Yeah, I, I watch loads of yeah. stuff on Twitch. My, some things that I just. I'm not playing anymore, like a bit of Fortnite, or just to see what the, how the pros are playing. Or I, actually, yeah. I, I rarely, I rarely actually sort of look for games that I that maybe I, I'm not going to get I, for some reason. I'm not like okay, well, I'm not, I'm not getting this today. I'll look for the, the streams on Twitch. I rarely do that for some reason. I guess, I guess often, if I'm interested enough, I would have just done whatever I could to, to get the game. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I watch, uh, I watch, uh, you know, those people play loads of different things. I really enjoy it. And when when, when we first had LED, I watched loads of Twitch, not the first like few weeks because I, you know, didn't really have time to pick up a controller. But I mm-hmm. was up at like three in the morning uh, doing a feed. So yeah, I watched loads of stuff on Twitch, and that was actually just <laughs> when the PS4 had come out, or like a month or so after the PS4 had come out. So right, I have a yeah. PS4, and that had a Twitch app. So it was great. I was like, I can watch the you know, people playing uh kill zone shadowfall on my T V. You see, I think <laughs> that- see, I, I I still don't I still don't really understand all of that at all because I mean I watch a lot of video game stuff, but it's all just like documentaries and stuff. That's what interests me. And I I don't really find it terribly interesting I mean, you know, watching other people play. It's just You see, yeah, I, I it's know. not that part that I'm like I could quite happily watch someone play games like i remember when on live first happened and you know there was that you could just like pan left and there's that yeah, whole that was really like, cool tab of the design. menu there was yeah and it was just like oh yeah just watch people play borderlands 2 and look at what kit they've got and see what you know that was that was cool that was interesting i think what gets me about twitch and what stops me from getting involved is like i can't i, I haven't seen like a channel where i'm like looking at the chat and thinking, yeah, these are all cool, nice people that I want to hang out with. <laughs> yeah, but I feel it like is that's a, a barrier that. to me. But it's, yeah, it's sure. more, I mean, I, you know, and I, mean I, uh, I obviously have mentioned loads of times, I love Kind of Funny, but if I yeah. were to watch Amy live and look at the Twitch chat, I'm like, I'm never going to do this ever again. It's not <laughs> often because like, the, the big people, the, the people who have got you know, thousands of people viewing, the Twitch chat's a disaster anyway. And then yeah. even if it's slow, like, I no, it's not about that. It's more, you know, so... Yeah. I mean, it... I'll tell you what was funny with that was that you know that Metroid Prime Four video oh, that yeah, they yeah. released, yeah. and it's like comments disabled. <laughs> and it's like, it's like, that that was, was probably a wise, wise move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, is that? I think did we answer the question? I, I think we, we did. did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, Benjamin Watts says uh, loving the podcast, uh, and Sean is doing a great job hosting. Thank you. 
Uh, just in reference to your PSVR chats, I was wondering if any of you have played Here They Lie. I had a PSVR for over a year and played most of the games available, but it was by far the best experience I had, and I feel it was very underappreciated. If you haven't played it or heard of it, I would highly recommend. PS, you don't need move controllers. Yeah, it's, it's a horror I mean, game, isn't you, it? You could say that about pretty much... Oh, it was much a horror game? Oh, that's, PSVR that's why yeah, it, it can, Obviously, it's oh, one yeah. of the launch titles, um, and I... Played like five or ten minutes because I think there's a de- it's on the free PSVR demo disc one, and it's quite okay. a weird experience. Like like the, the levels suddenly change behind you. I think I remember you like following a woman in yellow, and like the rest of the, the rest of the levels in black and white. Anyway, but mm-hmm. it was also quite scary bits, so I wasn't ever going to play the game. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think if you're it's a, a shame fan, because obviously the potential for horror in VR is incredible, but that's never something I'm going to engage with. <laughs> no. <laughs> Absolutely no chance. But yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, 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 at the time, yeah, people saying this is definitely one, definitely one to get. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, not for me. I won't be able to handle that. <laughs> uh, do, uh, I mean, do you not answer know. that, James? Did you have you played it? Um, no, I've not played it. If it's cheap, maybe yeah. I'll have a look. But you should, but, yeah, there's, there's on yeah. the first PSVR demo desk. So you should give it a go. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely yeah. do that. Maybe for next week because uh, yeah, I don't mind horror stuff. It's fine. It's yeah, because I remember when you played the bloody. Uh, what was the the Resi Seven demo? The kitchen, yeah, the kitchen, yeah. Was, was just the kitchen, mm. and you just sat there, just going, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, laughing no at it. So you've just been stabbed in the chest, James. React, mm. uh, Sean. You <laughs> should try. Um, you should probably Rush of Blood, which is the uh, uh, Until Dawn Rush of Blood, which is basically it's basically the, the that was a, ghost a shooter, train. Wasn't it? Oh, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. shooter. Yeah, that's, it does some like there's some like. I went not not scary, but like spooky bits. I mean, I'm not a fan of horror, but I, I got through it and it was fine. And it, that's a really good game, actually. You should, you should try and that 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 uses yeah. the moves. Yeah, not, oh, yeah. not I mean, many do, that, but that, that does. Hey, James, it's, it's <laughs> true. It's it's that is a good game, and, and like the scares in that are kind of like the first couple of jump scares are like a bit scary, but mm. then it's like you're like, oh, is another one of these again? Is it? And you're kind of anticipating it, okay. and it becomes much less but it, scary. It does, but it's, it's still yeah, fun. It, but it, it, that's like one of the games where it does things you couldn't do without VR. Like it, you'll you'll be looking, you know, looking around the minecart, you know, looking you know, forward, left, and right, shoot things. You'll look to the right, and then you look to the left, and suddenly there's like a thing there. Like you couldn't do that in non VR. And uh, yeah, so I was like, oh my god, you bastard! And I was like, oh, okay, okay, you know what? You've impressed me. That that was good. Um, so it does do some cool things like that. And uh, yeah, I'm obviously a massive wimp, but uh, that is. Is, uh, it's, a, it's a good one to play. You should, give, you should get involved. Mm-hmm. Is that it for emails, James? It's yep. on to tweets. You can tweet us at Computer Game Pod on Twitter if you want to send us a question. Um, first one is Mike Pt89. What the fuck's going on with the episode names, lads? Now we've only had two. <laughs> you think to me about one's like well, this is your your deal, isn't it, Matt? I mean, what, what have you been I mean, to be fair, we 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 appro- Matt wasn't sure about the last one, and we approved it. So this is on all of us. What was it? I don't even remember. It was like well, yeah. we talked about <laughs> the um, ambassadors of funk. Uh, doing the <laughs> yeah. Mario Super Mario Land song, and then so I thought yeah. Ambassadors program, and it was like Ambassadors of Funk program. I mean, it's a bit. <laughs> Why did you do that? You just say Ambassadors of Funk would have been no, fine. It was like a link it's... to like the old 3DS Ambassador program. Anyway, <laughs> we wish we hadn't. <laughs> so, we I mean, that was that. that was tenuous. I thought it just sounded funny. So yeah, I mean, it was <laughs> a bit long. It sort of really fucked me when I was putting the tweet out. Frankly, so this one's gonna be this episode like then is gonna be like two. It's gonna be two, two letters long. That's it. Really maximize what I can put on Twitter. Um, and the one before that was all like bad nerds. It, they're fine, Mike. Step down. It's fine. I'll put out a good so, one yeah. this week. It's um, was it left for red or whatever? You, whatever left for red, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's classic. Red, no, red for dead. That was it. Red, red for, for dead. dead. Maybe we yeah. call that. Maybe I'll make another pun. Who knows? Well, I mean, you're listening to this, so you literally know at this point. Um, Connell I tweeted, I'm, "I've just finished The Witness and I've loved it, and now I'm looking through two to three year old YouTube videos about it. What game did you play way after release that you wish you'd played when it was current and people were talking about it?" <clears throat> uh shit. Um, there's definitely been loads of these. Um, mm. I mean, Hollow Knight, because obviously if I played that when it came yeah. out, I would have got in the fucking game of the year list. Um, yeah, same here. So that's definitely, uh, yeah. that's yeah, definitely well, that, one. That's on um, you two, and that, that's why I don't think the deal should be allowed. Like you miss, you missed the boat. <laughs> Move on, Sean, Sean. We could have made, we could have made that game of the year. You know, I know. We didn't know. Well, that. I know we in 2017. <laughs> what yeah. in the year Mario and Zelda came out? <laughs> well, probably yeah, not. Maybe no. <laughs> not, but yeah. We'd have pushed it hard though. It's pushed it hard <laughs> round first round probably. Um I'm trying to think yeah. what others that there's definitely been you know, with that, that you get that sensation of just like, oh, people haven't been lying about this for two years. It is really good. <laughs> um 
I just can't I mean, there, there are those, think but also, of There's anything. also something really satisfying in playing a game that is like two to three years old. And then you're yeah. like, okay, I look on YouTube and there's obviously there's like a million podcasts. There's those like, you know, yeah. let's plays. There's people looking back like two anniversary, you know. So it is mm. also cool to look back on games. Like, oh, yeah, this was well loved. And it's also easier if you're stuck. <laughs> I was famously quite late on Inside, wasn't I? But that was by like months rather than years. Um, I think it came out in like March. Then I played it like right at the end of the year for the Game of the Year show, didn't I? Um, what game is that? Yeah, oh, oh, the Witness. Uh, inside, sorry. Oh, inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. Of course. Yeah, which again was just one of those like, oh yeah, no, this is, there's a reason everyone was raving about this. Like they weren't making it up. <laughs> yeah, it's tough because so, yeah. if if like I mean, this happens about like, TV, books, films, everything, all that, all, and music. You like, you don't maybe you don't play it at the beginning or listen to it or read it, or whatever it is, and then mm-hmm. everyone's raving about it, and then there's a part of you like, I'll oh, just fuck off. I, I can't. <laughs> I'll play on my own time, and then by that time, yeah. everything's built up, and it's like it's one of the best games of the generation. You're like, well, I probably won't like it, or just like it's too much of a weight <laughs> on my shoulders. Then you play it, and then you know, invariably, I guess, you might, yeah, you, you you'll probably like it, but. Uh, Mm-hmm. yeah there's a pressure there as well isn't there yeah yeah definitely and uh, yeah like you say this if you if you've got like the slightest bit of doubt about whether or not you'll like something like you say that the constant raving can just make you be like no nah, just fuck off I don't, <laughs> i'm not interested yeah. <laughs> yeah i get that all the time with stuff <laughs> so. have you got an example james uh well i was thinking i was thinking about like yakuza but mm-hmm. then that's like i mean that wasn't really massive when it first came out was it and it's there was a lot of problems with that, and it seems to be now going through like a much bigger sort of Bit phase of rebirth now, than, and, yeah. uh, now with all the re- yeah with all that rudeness. So yeah. yeah, maybe that. But yeah, I can't really. Think Are you excited else for moment. Judgment? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because it is basically a Yakuza game. It's, <laughs> it's another one. Yeah. Just not about uh, Darren Gargett, uh at Desmond on Twitter. Is it hypocritical, James, to moan about Delhi Premonition uh, and its quirks when Shimu isn't all that different? Discuss. See, I saw this, and the answer is no, because I've. The thing is, I've never defended Shemu for for all like its problems and quirks. So I've said that it's got loads of problems, but that didn't stop me enjoying it. In the same way, it's the same with Deadly Premonition. I mean, that also has problems, but I am generally enjoying playing it. So the answer is no. It's not hypocritical. Yeah, I mean, plus, I, isn't I, your, your I, whole I felt, thing? Sorry, go on. I felt the same about you know um, Detroit. Loads of quirks, but I still enjoyed it. Sean. <laughs> I was just going to say, with James's whole thing, yeah, with like Detroit versus Shenmue, is that Shenmue is old. Like, of course, it's got yep. design quirks. <laughs> um, whereas, yeah, Deadly Prem and uh, Detroit are newer and therefore have less of an excuse. But, yep. yeah. That's but let's not to, get into that again, guys. Let's slag off Detroit, like... <laughs> please. Um, uh, Joshua Boyles <laughs> at Joshy Boyles 2. I played through most of the Resi 2 remake when it came out on Friday and I loved it. I have no previous history with the game. Uh, as the original is embarrassingly older than me. Uh, have any of you oh, guys wow. played Resident Evil 2 <laughs> Remake yet? Um, the answer is obviously no. And did any of you have nostalgia for the original? I absolutely have nostalgia for the original. Mm-hmm. I mean, I remember playing that in my teens. Mm-hmm. Um, like on, a, in fact, yeah, like late teens on like on a PlayStation, and it was it was amazing at that time. I mean, yeah, I love that series. Mm. Yeah, I haven't played it, obviously, the remake, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I played for it a bit at the beginning, a, a, a bit of the, the second one. And yeah, it was it was one of the... It just felt like such an iconic game even even back then. Yeah. Uh, and and I, th- I think oh, yeah, maybe I've, everyone I've, loving this this new version is probably a testament to that as well. Mm. Yeah, I said, I mean, I, got, I even got the N64 version. Nice. And also the GameCube, like, re-release of it as well, because, yeah, it's... <laughs> They're good games. They they were good games. I very much enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I still haven't. Uh, I will get to this at some point, but just not yet. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, tonight, nine p.m. I'm, I'm going to be struggling through it and crying. Uh, Thomas at Lamplight Forty Two uh, seems churlish to complain when you about content when you guys are smashing about Alex Kid when um, <laughs> probably after finish Resi, but February time. I want to get to Look, it. Right. Trust me, I want to get to it. Me and James both funny because I'm going to struggle through playing it. You don't offer an alcoholic a drink and you don't ask Matt when he's going to stream a new game. Yeah, you know I'm right. going to find a new day of the week. Um, but it's I cruel. just can't stop. I'm addicted to the content. Um, I am looking forward to this, though. I want to see how it, how it turns out. Because <laughs> it is not the game you remember it to be. Well, Alex, Alex Alex is. Gonna... Oh, no, yeah. I, mean, I remember it being, being incredibly hard and it was just a... Ten- mm-hmm. it's just a point of frustration in my household for a million years and I never finished it so <laughs> I, I'm yeah 
I'm more worried about that than I'm say playing Bloodborne because Bloodborne, mm. you know, may be a hard game, but there are it's a modern game and I'll I'll get through it and there's like guides and stuff. But like with Alice Kid, it just feel it felt ridiculously hard at the time, and I'm just worried that I was where I get past bits because it's just antiquated or it's just yeah, it was ridiculous, it was stupidly hard, impossible at the time. It has not aged well. <laughs> like, really I'm way more worried about struggling Sorry. on this than I was Dark Souls or Bloodborne. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's not good. Um, uh, Thomas is back. Do you get squeaky bums before you stream? I can't play games under pressure. As soon as someone watches me play a game, my fingers turn to butter. Um, not really. I mean, only more like due to technical concerns. Like you, like you know, you set up all your layouts and stuff in in Streamlabs, and then you're like, ah, oh, yeah, but what if? It just fucking dies but on me for some reason. What if my voice reason. goes really deep? Yeah, what if my voice goes really deep? That'd be <laughs> awful. Um, yeah, so you, you like you worry that like stuff like that might just collapse because you know you're like, well, I, I like troubleshooting live on air is not entertaining for yeah. anyone. So yeah, I, I so worry you- about that stuff, but not. Um, I think like because the second you start the stream and you see there's like people in the chat and it's like, oh yeah, I know those guys. This is nice. This is <laughs> this is fine. Um, yeah, like that that sort of removes any sort of tension. I think in, in terms of like being entertaining or knowing that you know you've got the you've got the the you know the support of the room. Um, that's really not a problem. It's just the technical stuff, really. See, I didn't have any problem with that in a sense until I started streaming with the Xbox One, uh, yeah. which is awful. <laughs> it's absolutely terrible trying to stream with that console because you can't put and, the uh, chat on the screen, can you? You have to fuck yeah, around. It's terrible, yeah, yeah. And, but also just getting the whole thing working and it's just yeah, I, I didn't yeah, enjoy like, that. Yeah, because it's, it's obviously, terrible. like a, couple, a few years ago, you used to be able to like, snap other apps. You used to be able to like snap like yeah. the. I'm sure like a browser window, couldn't you? Actually, after yeah. you like said it was annoying, I was googling it, James, to find out. But yeah, but a few years ago, people were like snapping Microsoft Edge and then having like a chat window and that. And then, but like mm-hmm. it's ridiculous to have an update the app where you can have both the game and the chat open at once. It's it's crazy, yeah. really silly. Um, I mean, I haven't got like Elgato and all that kind of stuff. Get so, the Elgato you know, out. Get yeah. come on. Get the Elgato. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, but you've got just have like a laptop open with a chat open and that. Uh, that's what I would do because the iPad's going to turn off the security isn't it or yeah. turn the, yeah. the screen lock off on that I don't know have the chat open it's just annoying though isn't it like to look <laughs> down you know it's just much easier when it was just on the screen it's, you see I'll, you know, I'll be interested yeah because I, when I streamed Desert Child so because that was a console game I like because I haven't got so I've got my laptop on my little desk in the living room um, but I haven't got like a second screen there so i have to play console games on the tv so i have to sit on the sofa so i'm like two three meters away from the laptop so i've got like a massive mic cable trailing across the living room and then but luckily like it's really impressive what you can do with streamlabs obs like the fact that i can just use my old tablet as like you know you'd show it a qr code and then suddenly you're logged in on your tablet and you can like switch between all your layouts and stuff um so yeah so it's not the end of the world that i don't have to sit near the laptop but It'll be interesting to see if this next stream is any different because I will be sat next to the laptop for that one. So I don't know if that's going to make so it easier. I just feel, or... without it being on the screen at the same time, it feels less. I feel less connected yeah. because when I was playing stuff like you know Heavy Rain and everything, you could see like I could see instantly like how people were reacting <laughs> yeah. to stuff. Whereas now it's like I, it's like every five minutes where I'm like, oh, let's see if anyone said anything, and it's just not the same. You know, yeah, it's, just, it's a shame he's all missing I'll out, figure out a better the, way. Uh, on the chat straight away. I don't know. I don't it's know like, what it's... to do. It's like when you know filming a sitcom with an audience or without, isn't it? It's like you, when you haven't got that ability ability to play off what the audience is thinking mm. of everything. That yeah, it's, it's a shame to not be able to do that. I think, and that's just because the Xbox One's terrible. Yep. Um. Yeah. At this stuff. It's yeah. So good. James is much more used to playing. I saw like Mrs. Brown's Boys. Uh, <laughs> whereas uh, you know, most of us just in front of a live exactly. studio audience yeah. something yeah, like the so. worst sitcom apologies <laughs> to any fans out there also please unsubscribe what the hell are you doing with your life um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I mean I'm exactly the same as Sean it's not like the, the game is like the, that's the easy bit it's all like the technical mm-hmm. stuff and make sure I've yeah. maybe I don't know unmuted my mic when I started talking <laughs> that's happened uh, happened on Saturday um, so yeah it's all and once that's like I get probably more stressed to make sure okay everything's in line everything's working yeah. you know um, 
Yeah, like, like the PlayStation is so annoying for that because every time it seems you unplug and then replug it back in, like I move it up, you know, it up and down um, from downstairs to my office all the time. Like it, it re enables like HDCP, which is like the security protocol. Oh, yeah. And then, like yeah. last week, for uh, just before I was playing, I like got all set up in a like, day or so before, like um, Blood on the first Blood on Sunday is two weeks ago. And then, like, I plugged it in. I was like, everything set up. And I was like, okay. I was like, why well, can't I see the gameplay? And I was like, half an hour of like frantic, like, why is this fucking working? And then eventually I was like, oh no, because that thing just ticked itself on. And you have to turn it off. And anyway, it's like the yeah. technical stuff is way more of a stress. As soon as it's all ready to go yeah. and I do my intro and we start playing, that's when I can just relax. And mm-hmm. yeah, it's so much easier. The actual game playing, I mean, obviously, <laughs> obviously I'm not the world's best game player, but I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm fine mm-hmm. to. Show up my lack of skills on the stream is not about that. It's just make sure it all works. <laughs> that that's the stress. I mean, I, I should say like all credit to Matt. I've just nicked all of his stream layouts and used them. So that's, that was I'm, a I'm massive so impressed help. that that works. Like, the <laughs> fact we can like share yeah. a login and it's like you've got all them. That's so good. Yeah, because it shares like the fact that it shares all the assets and stuff as well is is really impressive. Um, but yeah. Yeah, well, uh, right, what's next? Anyway, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so Shawnee Boy, a bit premature, I know, but any chance of Matt and Sean, uh, or James, a co op streaming playing Monster Hunter well when the DLC drops this year? I mean, maybe. Um, I mean, Matt, how much progress did you make in it? You did a couple uh, of hours, didn't you? I, I don't know, 15, <laughs> 20 hours? I, okay. It wasn't much. I mean, I'd, yeah, I'd be up, I'd be up oh, for doing some. James. Check the hours, James. James, are you, you're <laughs> not interested at all, are you? No, that's, that's sorry. a shame. It's not. I mean, it, again, it's one of those games I probably would yeah, really it was like. Excellent. But it's just... I was going to say, out of all of us, you're the most forgiving of like Japanese design quirks. <laughs> so I <laughs> feel like you'd be. Yeah. You'd feel like you'd really it, enjoy it's it. It's really but... excellent. It's. I mean, yeah. if it's it's sort of the shit thing to say, but uh, you yeah, know, it, it's got a, a sort of Destiny-ish feel in that. It's like a mm. you know, oh, yeah, yeah. co-op, and I, I, I just thought I thought it was really really, really good fun. You know, I can't remember why I stopped, yeah. but is. Is there a Switch version that's worth playing? Oh yeah, well, the really. uh, whatever they called it, Generations X or whatever it was that uh, Gen- or XX. I can't remember the one that came out this year. Anyway, yeah, it is is great. Uh, but it is like it's an old school Mon- Monster Hunter game. It's not like Monster Hunter World, so there is uh, additional faff involved. But it's still really good. Cool. Uh, SMW, another mention for The Witness here. My dad has started playing The Witness, yeah. but as a non-gamer, he's really struggling with the dual stick controls. If consoles are ever to appeal to non-traditional gamers in the way mobile phones have, or phone games have, do you think the controller will need to evolve? We've already tried that, haven't we? Mm. I mean, there was the, the Wii Remote and, you know, that. there's all like the motion control stuff. And I don't know. I mean, I kind of think, does it ha- does, do we need to do this? You know, like to get more people in or whatever. I mean, it's like sometimes if you want to like engage in a hobby or something, you do have to like learn like how to use. I know something. what you mean, but then you... something like The Witness, where like it's not an FPS, it just <laughs> yeah. happens to be first person. Like, would it really hurt the experience if those controls were simplified somehow? Yeah, it's I mean, a maybe it would tablet. because they. Yeah. What's sorry? Yeah, can you play it on phone or whatever though on tablets? Because if you yeah. can, then there you go. Yeah, you know, just do that. I'm pretty sure you can. Yeah, yeah, it came out on iOS, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, so it yeah. did. Yeah, I'm sure. I'd be interested to see how that controls and whether that is just like a you know sort of dual like dual sticks on the screen scenario or something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's a shame that a game where that first person movement and looking around it isn't necessarily the focus of it is still a, a you know that's a blockage to someone playing yeah. it. I mean, I, I don't know what I have to do. I mean, it it might just be it's gonna just it as bad as it is, it will just be a generational thing because yeah, in two or three generations, this or, or less. I mean, whatever. I mean, like this isn't gonna be an issue because people have grown up with the dual sticks. Mm-hmm. It's just probably like the back end of the last generation who, if they do words play games, they just use D pad, I guess. Yeah. So sorry, S and W. Uh, although it is out. I mean, it, so maybe yeah, just... and like in in terms of the controller evolving, it's like. Does it need to evolve, or does it just need simplifying for some people? But and and then that restricts you in other ways for loads of other games. So yeah. it's you can't win really. But do you think the controller? I mean, like I said, we sorry, James. I was going to say, like I said, you know, we tried that with like the Wii Remote, didn't we? You know, like the yeah. whole, yeah. You know, this is like simplified down, but then it got to the point where that was becoming a barrier to games on the Wii, like as in, you know, like how they could be played. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they tried to get around that, didn't they, with the Wii U by just like. Letting any Doing controller both. known to man just like work on it, but everyone, that just confused everyone. Just everybody. stop caring, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Shame. Yeah, if my controller's don't have condoms, I'd, I'm not really a fan. Um, but do, do you guys think the controller is going to like? What did the Wii <laughs> had those like weird like condom things, didn't they? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the sleeve Sorry, yeah. things, and then also you post on like Wii Motion Plus, and it's like, geez, what am I doing with my life? Yeah, um, it was massive, Motion Plus. It, it now bundle. works as we said it would originally. <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> uh, but do you guys think like, the con- like the controllers are going to drastically change in the next like few years? Because obviously we had like the 360 pads, and now we've got Xbox One, and I wouldn't surprise if that's just the same pad for the Xbox Two or whatever we're calling it. Like the PS4. I, I do like the Dual Shock. It's got that touchpad that's never really utilised. I'm not sure if they'll scrap that or I don't know. It's got the light. It'd be a shame because I mean, you see, I I've kind of because I hadn't used PlayStation pads for quite a long time, and then I went to play using the Dual Shock, and the Dual Shock is fine, but I still feel that the Xbox One controller is better. Oh no, see, I in, in broadly the sense, speaking, they are the same. No, but they're not. You know like, what I mean? The, though, the feeling like, is no, no. I know they, they yeah, feel yeah. different, but like the layout is pretty much settled now. Yeah. Um, other than where you put the left stick, I guess. Um, I mean, I like the touchpad on the PS4. I think it's yeah, a really feel, good idea, and it's yeah. a shame that it's not used more. See, I don't. I, but, when do you use it though? Other than as just as a button. Well, that's yeah, the but, thing. I mean, but yeah. it could be. I mean, you spoil it. Okay, Astro Bot. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, there's actual yeah, it's little a shame gestures more and stuff. Haven't utilised all the all the functionality from it, but I, I still think mm. it's a cool it's a cool thing to have. I mean. I'm yeah. glad it's got it, um, even if it is just another button. But there are other uses. Um, yeah, you know what they'll do, don't you? Like for the for the Dual Shock Five, they'll just take that and just put it on the back and just say back touch. <laughs> and they won't just, make that mistake. The Vita thing all over again. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah I mean, you see, boring. like when people say oh, about PS Five and what could the pad be, you always see like a few comments saying, "Well, oh, we probably just have a screen on it next time." Like, like what well, are we going to go back to like, mm. VMUs, which were cool. They were cool on the Dreamcast, but they I don't were, yeah. know. Like little games, yeah. You know, like also like the battery lasts like two seconds on the Dual Shock. Like <laughs> maybe ditch the lights. I don't know. I but mean, the it... lights you need for uh, VR. So yeah. yeah. So I yeah, guess yeah, the lights are some, never going to go. Some foresight there, wasn't there? Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just it's hard to imagine, like you say, because we had the Wii and it was this like major disruption, and yet still. We've pretty much just got the same controllers we always had, so it's hard to imagine what would be big enough to really, you know, change like that standard controller layout. Well, you know, you know what it is, Sean, don't you? Come on, it's connect three. Yes, <laughs> yeah, what we need. It's be the controller. Yeah, the controller. Yeah, yeah it's, it's I, I guess like stick a valve were trying to change things when they first announced the Steam controller, and the first version of that was like, <laughs> yeah. really this is so different and new, and like, like there's no sticks because both of them are just like convex. I think it's complex. You know, like, like yeah, it's like a bowl shape they? controller. Yeah. Is you can basically play like PC style, like RTS and stuff on a pad, really good. And then, like that was like the first version. Then, like the actual release version, there was a stick and there's more traditional <laughs> buttons. But that when that first got announced, that looked really, really cool. And I don't really but like. But that was an interesting one because obviously that was like a concession to you know PC games that require a mouse and keyboard, wasn't it? It was like, oh yeah, look, you've got this this sort of touchpad that's like as good as a stick but also can sort of act as a mouse cursor as well and i don't know how well that ever worked no i mean, I mean super, I, not I, that I well because i don't see many people when they're yeah. super cheap and they're but i think yeah. a lot of people still from pc probably still use like a 360 pad or an xbox one yeah. pad yeah yeah yeah, yeah I, it's I easy mean, enough I, to pair a dual shock as well yeah i, I i've loved I, I i enjoy both of them and like since getting my x i obviously play xbox a lot more but i'm still mm. just not a fan of those those like quite spongy shoulder buttons and i i prefer I mean, as much as I hated the previous Dual Shocks, uh, I, I think that the Dual Shock Four was a better pad. Mm-hmm. I just, I just feel that the Xbox One pad just feels more solid to me. It, it, yeah, like it does the... feel more solid for sure. But those those shoulder buttons are just like they've never felt great, and the ones on three sixty felt nice and clicky, and you know what you're doing. Mm. But the sticks, the sticks on the Dual Shocks still don't feel brilliant, like compared with the. Uh... Xbox One ones, I I don't think. Yeah, that. I mean, I'll I tell you a word for it. Perfect world would be like Dual Shock, but with like the sticks uh, at the same angles. But the D pad on the Xbox One is still terrible as well. <laughs> uh, the PS4 one's much better yeah. than that. So yeah, it's just you know, can't we just can't we just bring them together? You know, just have <laughs> the best bits for each one. You know, it's uh, <laughs> an yeah. absolute Frankenstein of it. Also, Frankenstein's pad. So, um, I mean, I would I would like a Dual Shock Four with the left stick switched with the D pad. Yeah, th- because yeah. I feel like Sony persisting with that stick placement is just them being like, "No, we didn't just take a SNES pad 
and then add the sticks on the bottom. <laughs> like, that's definitely not what we did. Like, I feel like that's just, they're, they're just refusing to admit what happened there. But hey, home. Yeah, I just had this had look here. They got the controller ownership by players on Steam. Oh, yeah. You know which, what's the most popular 360? one? 360? It is yeah. the 360 <laughs> one. Uh, followed by the PS4, yeah. and then followed by Xbox One. After that, I do's poor Steam controller, yeah. R.I.P. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one, no one <laughs> used <laughs> bothers with that. So, yeah. um, uh, right, what else we got? We okay. Um, Luke Summerhays, uh, friend of Bears at Buskerly on Twitter. I think James is making Mario games extra hard for himself. If you keep holding A after initial jump, you'll get extra height when you land on an enemy. Yeah, you can do that, but it just doesn't feel as nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, really, because if you press it the second time, it like really hammers it home. You know, it's just I don't know. I preferred it. We're gonna end it there. Right. Um, okay, that's it for the tweets. <laughs> should we go on to the end bit? Might as well. Eh? I, 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 we, we, we should. I should get that, that transition a bit better. Anyway, um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I think it's because it's you doing both of them. I know. Yeah, I don't know if it's possible back over it, to you. So you'd say yeah, you, Matt, and <laughs> we go back. That's fine. You just crack on, mate. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I won't be so polite next time. It's silly. Right. Okay. Um, we're streaming. You may have heard that, of course. Uh, if you're listening to us on yeah. Wednesday, I'm streaming Resident Evil tonight on twitchtv slash Computer Game Show at 9 p.m. Come and watch me scream. Um, uh, and generally be quite afraid. Uh, that's tonight. On Friday at 9, James is playing Deadly Premonition. Sunday at 9, I'm back playing Bloodborne Sundays. And Tuesday at 9, Sean is playing a random indie game. Old or new, who knows? Um, you can go to, yeah, search us on Twitch, um, and that'd be great. If you've got Amazon Prime, you've also got Twitch Prime, think about going to our account and dropping your free monthly sub on our, on our account. We'd really appreciate that. The podcast is obviously available on every podcast service known to man. But if you've got five seconds, please go to Apple Podcasts and leave us a review because they really help. Uh, all the all mm. our main links, all our social channels are pinned to the top of our Twitter account. Just go to twitter.com slash computer game pod or search us on the app. And there's links to like our Discord and all the other social channels, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. Uh, that's that. Cool. Get on it. Have a good week. And thanks for letting us be natural. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> I wonder when I'll stop making. Thank you. I wonder when I'll stop making. <laughs> <laughs>